We're back. We're back. It's Remove Film from Trey. Episode 16. Back from break. Count, you're banned on Twitch. <laughs> we'll talk about uh, yes, that. Yes, I am banned. Uh, well, I shared a movie with nudity, which is a big no-no on Twitch, and so I've been banned. You'll be back soon. Slushy. I don't think it was the the nudity in the film. I think it was that you kept putting Susan Sarandon's fucking pin up on screen. They full screen to be blown out. They deserve with to be seen. Nipples and bush. They deserve to be seen. Could have been the bush, is what Slushy's saying. What? Sorry, after you bush. didn't see the whole incident, and <clears throat> you also didn't no. see most of the movies, but you're here because yeah, I don't, I'm not sure why. I, yeah. We brought back Cyraptor. Cyraptor's back. Fan favorite. We just love having you. I am the fan that is... <laughs> I'm the fan favorite of me. The fan polls come in. Yeah. They say at the top of the list, Cyraptor. There's no second thing on the list. Uh, what are we doing this week? Well, we, we, we just... I don't know. We just watched a few movies over the past, what is it, three weeks now? Yeah, we had a little break uh, after COVID. This uh, is the third I'm back. Week, yeah. I'm alive. Yeah. Uh, Count. Count was ill. Glad you're fine. I'm glad I'm fine, too. I was out of town one week, and now we're back. And uh, I was out of town the week before that. Yeah. But I'm not a, <laughs> I'm not a host, so. So... I did. I got a little report on the Razzies. I got mad at the Razzies last week, uh, and I, I prepared you three weeks ago. Last, yes, last thank episode. you. Last episode for those of you binging uh, about two hours ago. I got <laughs> mad at the Razzies, <laughs> uh, so I, I decided to look them up. What what are these fucking things? Who are these people? Here's so here's my report. I've got here on the picture. It was started by John J.B. Wilson, a movie marketing and trailers guy. Like he's That's in, your, he's is in. Is that the Amazing Randy? The Amazing Randy. It no, does look John. like him. Who the fuck is the Amazing Randy? <laughs> he's the guy that would like have a million dollar challenge to prove anything paranormal, is psychic. Oh, uh, it's probably not him. No, isn't he? Well, he's he's the guy that art that art banned from his show. That's for, the Amazing Creskin. That- Kreskin, not Randy. <laughs> We're off to a cracking start. Uh, it's, on the Razzie there's report. like a co Razzie named Mo Murphy, who, if you look on IMDb, she is an editor on a bunch of stuff no one has ever heard of. Um, like weird, tiny budget movies and shit and shorts. So this began, I think we're on the 43rd. Third, I think like in 80, I think in 1980, it started on an Oscar night potluck party. This motherfucker here uh, just thought he, he just thought, thought he'd be cute and have a little cute ceremony for the worst movies of the year at his potluck party. And then the local LA this, newspaper picked it up and ran a story on it. <laughs> and then they're it, the real monsters. Then. It, it, like, how does that even happen? Like, was so just somebody at the party? Count, you're a journalist. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it depends on what he was doing. Like, what was he before this? And who would be at that party? I, th- I like think he's... Thing. It's just like Hollywood people, probably. Like, yeah, well then, yeah, someone might be there to cover lowish, it. Any juicy gossip. Lowish level Hollywood people. Uh, so, like, in the intervene In the, the later years, intervening years, uh, like, CNN started covering it. On a yearly basis, like the thing got bigger and they started like renting out halls and shit. Uh, you know, and I, I get that. It's like, oh, it's a cute little sound bite. You know, there, there used to be more room for different news, <laughs> you know? Right. Uh, it's cute little just thing to put on the Oscars. Not everybody is smiles. I don't know. <laughs> so. There's a lot of like backlash on the internet about these fucking things now because they've been fucking up a lot. Like, like they gave Bruce Willis a Razzie for 
you know, his whole thing this past uh, decade for being easy, being easy. in 30 movies in a year. And then they're like, oh, we realize he has brain degeneration. <laughs> We're very sorry. <laughs> and, like, they gave Razzie to the lead actor of the Firestarter remake, who's, like, a 12-year-old girl. And they had to, like, redeem... They had to take that back. It's like, well, we don't want to ruin any careers, but they, they didn't... Never... Never apologize to Jake Lloyd or Macaulay Culkin. <laughs> also I mean, got the real curse. Yeah. Um, so there's a lot of Macaulay articles Culkin out there. One for. Uh, my girl. Was it my girl? It was some. No idea. It, it was funny if it was though, because he died. It was like it. father of the bride, or like what? Not <laughs> was not he in that. No, well, it, no, it wasn't father. It was. It was something I'd never heard <clears> of. It was some like weird side movie not like home alone or none of his big things um so like one thing i read is that the the razzies are counter to the hollywood monolith and uh-huh. i was like wait a minute <laughs> that doesn't line up so i started comparing who who was nominated for razzies and who got razzies it is lockstep, like every you can you can one to one line up who got Razzies and was nominated with Siskel and Ebert's worst of the year every year. Like so, it's like, what are you really doing? <laughs> like, do we really need another outlet for this? But like, they have another. They also have like weird vendettas. Like anything Stallone does, they'll give an award to regardless. Uh, they hate Madonna for some reason. <laughs> like wow. Madonna has got a shitload of Razzies. Uh, That's very cool. They they gave uh, Shelley Duvall like worst actress for The Shining. That's ridiculous. And then I, I think they apologized cool. later for yeah. that. <laughs> this one, this That's one another one. I want to take back. Right. But just... I don't know. Uh, it's it's just it's just like I find it very pathetic. <laughs> and like <laughs> I I was looking into it and I just kept getting mad. You know, like it's just they just give Razzies to what Siskel and Ebert doesn't like. Like, what's the point? I don't know. Who are these guys? Why are they still doing it? So I don't know. Does anyone have any questions? Who gives a fuck about what Siskel and Ebert think? I mean, I'm not sure that it's like... Their latest reviews have been kind of shitty. Yeah. Well, <laughs> one of them's dead. They're both Our dead. They're both both dead. dead. Oh, okay. right. I only knew for sure about one of them. I mean, you know, main, they're just... They're in line with mainstream criticism, is what I'm saying. So Yeah, that's yeah. what I never understood about the Razzies, because it's like they're not pulling from... A movie you never heard of that might actually be bad and like right. something that could be interesting. Yeah, it's it's very little like it's, like it's, Siskel it's, and Eber would occasionally bring in like a foreign film and talk about right. that and like the like Razzies don't even really seem to do that. Like there's no they don't look at independent stuff with the exception of like the Bruce Willis. <laughs> right, and that's just the knock on Bruce Willis. Yeah. If he wasn't in those they wouldn't look at those movies at all. Yeah. What were you saying, Sarah? After? It's just like a take that Hollywood elite type thing. It you know? seems that way. They're not like Red Letter Media where because, they spotlight like shitty movies and you might right. get something out of it. Right. Uh, um, you said they're in Hollywood, right? Yeah. You said. Yeah. I guarantee you. What are they, writers? Like, who are these fucking people? Well, they probably got rejected. Two people who work in the. It, it's like run by people who work in the Hollywood industry. But then I forgot to mention the voting. There's a forty dollar annual fee <laughs> that anyone can pay, and then they vote, and they have a forum, and there's no requirement to like actually watch the movies or anything. So I'm sure there's a lot of very cool like parasocial dog piling going on there. <laughs> I, you know, just doesn't seem healthy. I feel like it's so just not only is it lame, it's also a scam. Yeah. So. uh yeah, you know, uh, just like Wikipedia culture, you know, now like we have this fucking thing that people can cite <laughs> and people do cite 
And it's like, oh, well, huh, I heard Hudson Hawk is bad. I don't know. Makes me mad. Hudson Hawk is good, folks. You heard it from me. I heard it's bad. Did well, you, want, you, did you listen it. to the last podcast? No. It's Wait, good. Yes. It's good. <laughs> The Legend of Chun-Li, think, though, is bad, so... No, like, okay. We won't go there right now. <laughs> Later we will, though. But, like... When you're, like, you're, you're at a barbecue or a potluck with your friends, you're, you know... I've never been at a potluck with my friends. Well, never? you, you also like to cook aren't a big in Hollywood. Casserole dish is bullshit. Anyway, You've never done you're like at a big potluck with your friends. You... <laughs> You're playing a fun little party game about talking about bad movies that came out in Hollywood. Fine. You know, as soon as they started getting like media attention and getting big, I really wish they would have like pivoted to being like, let's celebrate the movies. Everyone fucking ignores because they deserve attention because they're actually good, but they're not, you know, made by the Hollywood elite and they don't get, accolades because of that like that would have been that would have been sticking it to the hollywood elite that would have been fucking counter i mean i'm not even sure that was their goal that was just one website sort of argued that that's what they were doing <laughs> you know right but i don't know i think like if if we get big mm-hmm. which is laughable to think about i know but if if i could simply big, increase your size on the on the overlay <laughs> If you like. <laughs> oh, that's fine. If we get big, I would like to think that we would talk about movies that deserve to be, you know, have attention pointed to them. Well, that's, I have a, I have a discussion question here. What is the point of film criticism? <laughs> what are we doing? Money. I mean, at the end of the day, there kind of isn't a point, but also like if, if we're just like, discussing things and like increasing media literacy at least a little bit even between us that's a noble thing you know i'm just jerking off here (laughs) that's why you're wearing the prison hat (laughs) in the theater if you're talking about like siskel and ebert type like critics that get published in newspapers and stuff it's i mean i think the point is to inform the consumer on whether or not they should pay money to see a movie nominally. Yeah. Like, I mean, I was thinking about like, you know, where I grew up and it's like a pretty small town and like a a three screen theater. And just like, I really doubt that people were like (laughs) getting anything from, you know, film criticism. Like, something that got two thumbs up probably anyone in my town would have gone to and been like, I, I don't know it seemed bad to me I didn't get it. <laughs> like well I mean there's no inherent criticism in, in giving an award to something though you're not sure that's just well but the like, the, it, the point of the award is it sucks right but I mean <laughs> what is the point of the academy awards it's just well, you know, yeah. for interesting I mean, that's, people to that's, pat each other on the back. That's a good question as well, just, yes. That's the better comparison, I think. Because there's no... Well, the Razzies the, always the Razzies run... People, people just really love movies, so they like to shit on them, and they like to praise them. <laughs> sure. <laughs> that's what it is. People just love movies. Some people do. Some people do. I don't, yeah, I don't know. Not the Razzie people. Yeah. I hate movies. So after loves pop culture. You're yeah. you're the of all kinds. You seem you're to the, the voice that we can't provide. The voice of the people. Me? So <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You seem uh, to have a very well rounded pop culture knowledge. Okay. I've never seen Robocop. <laughs> Sorry after okay, your response. But I mean, but those are things. This shit's all nepotism anyway. Who cares? But like, I've never seen Robocop, but I know that when the guy gets thrown out the window, his arms are really long for some reason. And I know that he shoots the, the dicks off. 
So I know the important stuff about RoboCop, but I don't even I, have to. Say I gotta it. say something before we get into uh, the movies. Okay. <laughs> sorry, you're sorry after you're sorry. I don't like to get political, but this has to be said no, because <laughs> this is like never happened in the history of our country. So I have to talk about this. No. It's yesterday. I think uh, this is the bit. Governor oh. Phil Murphy declared Central Jersey to be a real region. And I think it's insane. And now it's a real tourist area of New Jersey. And that's just <laughs> that's insane. It, it's, it doesn't exist. It's not real, folks. That's all. What's that mean exactly? A real region? Oh, there's North Jersey and there's South Jersey, but now there's Central Jersey. Right, but what does that mean? I don't know. It's not real. Does it mean any like does, does this do anything for your does, taxes or? I don't think it yeah. does anything. For, well, I'm still South. I didn't change, but. But someone that was that, Central. What it means is that now it has its own Wikipedia article. While the state of New Jersey is often divided in the North and South Jersey. Many residents recognize Central Jersey as a distinct entity. Governor Phil Murphy signed legislation designating Central Jersey as an official tourism region on August 23rd, 2023. And I think it's just stupid. Count, I think it was a good joke, and it reminds me of one of my own jokes. So. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> for thank bringing you. it. Uh, so. Way to date we, the podcast, Count. We did yeah, just watch Civil War on Drugs. <laughs> <laughs> what did you think of that, Sir? After I didn't think it was very funny. I okay. also didn't think it was very funny. Count? It was like there were a couple jokes that were funny, like when the lady sat down at the end and her skirt was like yeah, that was, a big circle. That was pretty that good. Was right. I thought it was. I liked the joke that was like. Uh, Shit, what was it? <laughs> you're a confederate, that joke. What was that? That one's good, yeah. I don't remember Fuck the first Fuck you, you're part. a confederate. Yeah, I don't remember the first part of that joke. Um, so no, I like this, but for me it's like, because I watch all their sketches, it's almost like just enjoying seeing them on screen. So I have a different takeaway from it. So I don't really know the widest kids you know. They're a comedy group. They're not kids in the hall. Troop. 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 Their comedy troupe. Troop. That implies they like travel around and maybe well, they play did play the flute yeah. and stuff. They went to like fucking that. the south or whatever. They would do shows across the country. They went yeah. to the south. <laughs> yeah, in the Civil War. Oh, in time, <laughs> right? Uh, <laughs> they went south in the Civil War. Count, you're you're more embroiled with these folks. Obviously. Uh, yes, I love the ways kids you know. Sarah um, knows them, I think. I've seen, I've only seen the Abraham Lincoln. They had a TV show on Peter IFC Peter. back in the day, which is an independent film channel. So I saw, no. I saw IFC like funded this, which I, I wondered if they were on. I can explain. Uh, this I was, I think, go ahead, because I think you're about to say the same thing I was. This was actually shot during the last season of the show, and they would air little pieces of it on every episode of the last season. So it was kind of like you would watch the movie, the next part of the movie at the end of each episode. And then they just released this kind of recently before Trevor died as like a complete movie package, which is why at the very end it said the whitest kids will return to Mars. What were you going to say? Sorry, after that, is that why you guys were talking about Mars? Yeah. Mars is going to be an animated movie that they come oh. out with, which Trevor did record okay. everything for before he died. Towards the end of the film, probably around like right after the the girl sat on the bench, I was laying down. I was laying down for the whole movie, but I like took my glasses off and put my covers over my head and just waited <laughs> for it to be over. Just, <laughs> just close your a, eyes. A rousing endorsement. Wow. You know, it's it's rare for Slushy to hate something. So it I didn't hate it. It was just kind of boring. Yeah, it doesn't inspire hatred. It I, inspire I wasn't. I, I I just I've never understood that style of humor. I guess. What style of humor is that? Like the, the, the humor where the, they don't make any jokes. The early <laughs> the early two thousands like stoner comedy, Harold and Kumar, American Pie, that kind of shit. I just never got it. 
I mean, it is weird because they weren't like a weed druggy yeah, type of people. They're not. Uh, this was like the most drug thing jokes that they've ever done. And I guess they got all of other system in one movie. Do they like, really right like there in the title? Do they really like Lincoln? Because like I know Lincoln, there's a Lincoln sketch. Yeah, Lincoln has appeared in like three sketches. <laughs> just big into Lincoln. They just yeah. Because that was who like, isn't one, really. They had the assassination of Lincoln sketch, which is one Cy Rector scene. That was like their first one that went really viral on the net. So people knew him for that. Really wanted to make a snappy comeback to Slushy, and uh, like the only name in my head is Lee Harvey Oswald. Uh, they uh, did John, John Wilkes Booth. John Wilkes Booth. That's who doesn't like. They have right. a anyway. great sketch about Lee Harvey Oswald. Oh, that sounds good. It's actually <laughs> like, very, is there very, a lot of historical good. stuff? For, like, they do a lot of historical stuff. Trevor was like a big conspiracy theorist and like into oh, history. Cool. So great. Like, uh, not so much that he believed them, but you know, it, from a like how we like Art Bell. Like, we find it interesting. You know. All the weirdo shit. Not necessarily that we believe it, but it's it's fascinating. Okay, we do like Art Bell. Uh, I thought it. Was, I don't know. It's, it had some funny jokes. I didn't. I was a little surprised how weedy it was, but it. You know. I'm glad I showed it to you because I never heard the opinion of people who like aren't whitest kids fans. So it's a unique spin to hear. It from. was better than the Mr. Show movie. That I haven't seen. Um, which was horrible. <laughs> but I like Mr. Show, the show, more. I don't know. I think if you showed this movie to a non whitest Kids You Know fan, uh, they would remain to be so. Yes. Right. I am, I am proof of that. Well, we'll have to watch some sketches at some point. Unless you will mm. pull the covers up. <laughs> Yeah. And hot box in there, yeah. To me, they're the opposite of like Miss Swan. <laughs> well, <laughs> damn. They're, in terms of comedy, I, the, the the thing that I thought was interesting about the movie, like in terms of comedy movies, is there was no like, there was no shitty love story. There was no like schmaltzy little like aside when one of the friends runs away. It was just like a pure. It just maintained a pure level of like not really that much jokes, but some jokes. Right. <laughs> like it never got serious in any way. So, and it was very low budget, but well, incredibly low budget because they were siphoning off episodic budgets to shoot this. Oh. They couldn't afford horses. Well, they weren't horses. I thought it was. I yeah. Yeah, that but would've it would have been, been funnier funny if they had were. It been, Real horse. I mean, let me write it. Here, let me let me be a new whitest kid. Let's go back in time. They got fifteen years. Space. They're disbanding permanently after Mars comes out. Well, we don't know that for sure. They have explicitly said it. You seem we to don't know, know. about this. Right. They, have See, explic- that- they have explicitly said it. They're, no, they're on stream all the time, Sire. After we don't really know. That's that pop culture. They have knowledge. explicitly said it. Why do you keep saying that? <laughs> because they have explicitly said it. They do self suck like every Saturday still. So what? we don't. They what? They stream on Twitch and they have a program that they do self suck where like the remaining members gather and they do stuff. So. So everyone but Trevor. Why is it called self suck? Because they're you know jerking themselves off over like their history and you know oh. stuff about the business. Okay. <laughs> Very so, self-indulgent type of thing. I just put that there because we just watched it this afternoon, waiting for my internet to stabilize. But jumping back in time, uh, it's William Friedkin died a while ago. And Count watched Exorcist. And I don't know. Yeah, I, I did because no one wanted to watch it with me. <laughs> so I ended up watching it by myself. So what do so, you think? Slushy, would you please watch Exorcist with me, Slushy? I would love to. Slushy says, no, fuck you. Yeah, that sounds like Slushy. It didn't seem really interesting. So what do you think? You'd, you'd have some thoughts on it. I do. I, did I really? We didn't cover this the last... Okay, I guess I covered it on my stream uh, talking yeah. about it. This is uh, a movie that I have seen. Okay, okay well, would you like it. to talk about it before I do? 
No. You can talk together to if you like. <laughs> you my experience with The Exorcist is... I think this was like my third. It might have been my fourth time, but at least I know it was my third time uh, seeing it. The first time I ever saw it was a, a young child. Um, actually, maybe not like super young. I think it was like 10. When did Monsters, Inc. come out? Do you know Sire after? 2001. Okay, that's when I saw it. Because I went to the theaters and I feel like there when was a trailer. 10, <laughs> you bought a ticket for Monsters, Inc. and went to The Exorcist. <laughs> No, 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 no. I, w- I went to see Monsters, Inc. at the theater with my aunt. And I think there was like a new Exorcist or a prequel or something coming out. So there were like posters or like uh, something that made me ask my aunt, what is that? And she says, oh, we'll have to watch it. So then like after Monsters, Inc., we did. And as a kid, I've explained before, like younger than 10, I was already into slashers. And so the Exorcist didn't scare me. And I was like, what's the fucking like? I don't. Okay. Like, yeah, it was funny, like, the little girl's cursing and, and all that shit. But, uh, so I didn't appreciate it as a child, younger child. And then I saw it again as a teenager, and I could get myself psychologically into it. So then it was, like, scary and creepy to me. And then I watched it again as a 32-year-old man. And it's no longer scary, but I have an appreciation for it as, like, a film. Um, I saw a lot of parallels of Dracula, which doesn't seem to get discussed online at all. It's very Dracula influence, which I liked. Uh, intentional or not, but the parallels are there. But overall, I mean, if, you, if you've never seen The Exorcist, you should. I don't know whether or not you should try and let yourself be scared by it or just appreciate it as a film. If you're into film, which you probably are by listening to this, you might get something out of it. My experience with The Exorcist is my my parents always said, when that movie came out, that was the scariest movie that ever came out. And then I watched it when I was, I don't know, probably 17 ish. And I was like, the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> that's not scary. So that's, I haven't watched it since. It scared me as a teen because I let myself, like, get, you know, I don't uh, know how to do that. More. Sympathy as like a, for a parent uh, about a child going through that, then I didn't give a fuck as a kid myself. You know what I mean? No. Nope. <laughs> well, then you're you just uh, I, I lack empathy. Apparently, you just said it nicer than I could. <laughs> so, like, I never got around to seeing The Exorcist, but like, probably 2016, someone I know was like showing it on Halloween on over, over on Ustream, I think. And, uh, I was probably high <laughs> and like it got to the point where it, what's Reagan is her name. Regan. Yeah. Yeah. Where, where they're like medically testing her to see why she's fucked up. And yeah, I could not deal with that. So I checked out and I've never like gone back. Cause I, I hate medical shit and that it was like that part felt so long. And so like, the, like creepy out, you couldn't deal with it or what? Yeah. I just like, I, I have like a phobia. I don't know. I hate okay. hospitals and people getting worked on medically. Like anytime there's a, the thing that always happens in movies is like somebody, you know, getting an injection. Like I, I can't look at it. Yeah. There's, <laughs> a, there's a lot of that. It's like, 20 minutes straight of that and it's i don't know i'm not like a i'm not a big i'm a i'm a whole album guy i'm not a single track guy so i i can't i I would feel weird just like skipping that part and then (laughs) watching the rest then you shouldn't watch it yeah and i just feel like it's like culturally like i know everything that happens in the movie because i've seen every second of it parodied or clips osmosis yeah I don't know. My experience with The Exorcist is that in like maybe 2006, like five years after it came out, I saw the Exorcist scene of Scary Movie 2 where they just (laughs) vomit all over each other for a full minute. Did you like that? No. Oh, okay. It's pea soup, they say. It it awoken something in me. Didn't do that. Come on. Uh, another t- to tie back to the Razzies, 
Uh, a Friedkin movie I want to watch is Cruising, which is about like Al Pacino trying to solve gay murders in New York. Uh, that was nominated for a Razzie. <laughs> I'm not sure why. Uh, homophobia? Maybe, yeah. Uh, I read the, I did read the Eber Although, review of it, and he said that <clears throat> uh, he, he posited that there was like gay backlash to the filming of the movie, and like maybe Friedkin kind of like backed off on some of the more. I don't know, controversial there, topics that a, he might have put in the film. And the film is like wishy washy as a result, but it doesn't sound bad. I, I don't know. I believe that was all studio interference. Like they they there's a disclaimer at the beginning of the movie that says like th- this is this film is not meant to be a combination of <laughs> The homosexual world. That's what they called it. The homosexual world. Have you seen it? This is just a small portion. No, I've never seen it, but when he died, a bunch of people were talking about it. I had never even heard of it. Yeah, I haven't heard of that one. And I, I watched a bunch of like clips and um there was like the DVD commentary that he did. Yeah. On it. It was like the best of William Freakins uh cruising. Right. It's it's cruising, not cruising. That's yeah. the the car. That's game. the car game. Yeah. Okay. Um. But yeah, it, I I don't know. Have any of you seen Dog Day Afternoon? I have. I'd no. like to. Is that him? Okay. No, but Pacino oh. is a gay guy in that too. Yeah, it's a good one. Well, he. Oh, I was He's not a he, gay guy. But well, <laughs> apparently, in the final scene, it, there's. I will, well, mm, never mind. I haven't seen it. Yeah, don't. Don't don't see never it. Mind. No, 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 don't. I was I'm talking to myself. Uh I mean, yeah, I've read I well, I don't know. I'm going to I'm going to watch it. We'll probably talk about it. Uh Sorcerer though. He directed Sorcerer. That's a good movie. Great I think, film. I th- yeah. We're all in agreement on that. Love Sorcerer. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's uh, I, I wish they'd make a Lego sorcerer set. If you've never seen Sorcerer, go see it. Download it if you have to. If I can watch it, it's not on Tubi. I don't think. I was looking at uh, I was, <laughs> I was looking Sorcerer up on, or I was looking William Friedkin up and it put the Sorcerer like poster. And there's like a, I assume like a streaming version of the Sorcerer poster that it's it's the bridge shot, you know, where the the poster is. But then there's like just a, a huge Roy Scheider head <laughs> like floating next to the truck. It's a very funny image. I don't know. Like it's it's shitty looking. But it's a great shirt that's like the truck, but as Pazuzu from Exorcist. And I've always wanted that as a shirt. A little bit of a crossover. Well, he did this. He did Sorcerer right after Exorcist. And then it's named Sorcerer because they wanted a supernatural connection. And uh, he thought that was a horrible idea. Uh, and it turns out he was right. Because like, I don't think it did that well. And people were like right. mad that it had nothing to do with supernatural shit. Yeah, I think you see the... The lettering that says Sorcerer in like... Right, it's just the name of the one, truck. One quarter of a second shot or something yeah but captain raz watched and he was like what the fuck <laughs> did he really no i'm kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> so moving on slushy yeah you watch turtles the new turtles movie i did yeah what do you think about that it was really good you went um, to the theater I did. First time in the theater since Sonic the Hedgehog came out. Um, I didn't get COVID, which is cool. Thank you. Um, which better than count in that way, I guess. I don't know. Um, this they're like a a fair bit younger, young like they're portrayed as young teens in this, and uh, I don't know. It's just really good, like. It it doesn't 
uh, follow any very specific uh, storyline that already existed. It was kind of its own storyline. Um, so you didn't even you didn't even know about Cuddly the Cowlick. So you're not like an expert. I'm not an expert, <laughs> uh, but my sibling is, and they were there with me. Um, so a lot of the information I know about turtles is from them. Uh, most of what I know is from video games, but it was like, you know, I don't need to explain the story or anything, but the, the portrayals of the characters were all very good. The music was amazing. It looked awesome. It's like a very sketchy CG. It's hard to like, it's like concept art. It's like, they just took the concept art and were like, okay, this is what the movie's going to look like. This poster you know, kind of looks like they ran fine edges on it in Photoshop. <laughs> like, is there any? I don't yeah, know, is a there like a bit. weird look to the backgrounds or anything? A little bit, yeah. Like when I say it was like the concept art, it's like when you when you look at concept art, like when you beat a game and they show you the concept yeah. art, when you hundred percent gex and they show you the concept concept art, it's it looks it's, way better than the game <laughs> in gex, right? Case, yeah, but it's it's like it's usually very. Uh, sketchy like they don't bother with solid lines and even if it's like a, a painted or a colored thing it's not always completely filled in it's mostly just to like give you the concept of the image weird uh they kind of just rolled with that art style for the whole movie um, okay and i think it looks really fucking cool it looks a little spider versey to me visually it Have goes that yeah for sure it doesn't quite do the the same like low frame rate animation that spider verse does yeah but the it's it's very i guess painterly is a good way to to say <clears throat> yeah i guess that uh that last <laughs> puss in boots movie i had yeah, kind of written that, off because i assumed it was going to just be it was going to look like all the other shreks but i guess they did kind of the, kind of the, the same impressionistic like i i like that i think i think it's cool that they're kind of like taking a lot of elements of like 2d animation and kind of stylizing 3d animation to look like it and using all kinds of i don't know yeah it's it's stuff. it's it's great it's good that like after 20 years of yeah. cg movies that all look the damn same as yeah. long as their budget is high enough, like the only different differentiating factor in CG animated movies was, is the budget good or not? Right. Even yeah. it's uh, not, so it's, <clears throat> it's good to see CG movies like doing something unique with their art style. Like that Russian Pinocchio. It, it, it looks as good as toy story. <laughs> it probably looks a little bit better than toy story in some ways, just because of the progression. I was, I was watching but, toy story a few weeks ago doesn't look great i love toy story but it looks like a movie from 1998 or whenever it came out 95 oh, delgo okay. looks wait. as I good as toy wait story to watch toy story um can i ask a question about the ninja turtles movie yeah yeah is it a multiverse thing <laughs> no oh, no good. it is not okay so there's no point where they like see a black and white turtle in another dimension. I, and, I guess they already um, did that. They did already do that. Turtles yeah, forever. Yeah. yeah. And I saw it. Was so, that a movie? Um, yeah. From like ages ago, like oh, 15 weird. years ago or something. It was, yeah. it was a crossover. It was like the 2003, the 2003 one. Yeah. Turtles. Yeah. And the comics and the, like the original right. image comics and the, and the original animated series. Yeah. This is but its it, entire own continuity. It's got every mutant you could think of. Um, it does? I was going to say, how are the much, villains yeah. in this? Because that's what I'm uh, interested in. They're great. Can I, ask, can I ask another question about the Ninja Turtles movie? Yeah. Does April cut Mikey any slack? <laughs> <laughs> um, April and Mikey are like pretty solid with each other i guess i don't know i'll, I'll say, say. <laughs> not in this one in this one it's 
Leonardo is finally getting his, his time to shine with April. I always, as a kid, I always wish that Donatello would kiss Irma. I don't know who Irma is. Did Irma oh. ever appear in anything else? Like I, I don't know. I don't think so. Who is the guy? <laughs> well, I can't ask this question. <laughs> Never mind. The guy at the end of the. Uh, I don't remember the, the his name. Like uh, Leon or something. The pink. He, the pink shirt. Did he guy. work at the at the yeah. news or something? Yeah, he's yeah. like the Weasley. I like, remember this. April rival. Uh, folks, we're talking about a pornographic Turtles Flash <laughs> animation from like 2004 or something. I don't know. Um, anything else on Turtles? Is it still it's in theaters? Good. Go see it. See it in the second run. When's it streaming? Yeah, it's it's still in theaters. I don't know when it's streaming. Is it doing How good? How woke is it? It yeah. came out like three weeks ago. So. Scale of one to ten. Um. Uh, Nine, I'd say nine. Nine, wow. Hmm. Yeah, ten being I Captain lot. Marvel. I guess. Oh wait, are you? Are you? Ten <laughs> being nine? TMNT one, oh, the, live were, ac- the live action. I How woke is it from the, a scale of one to ten? The wokeness of a scale of one to ten. Well, the wokeness is definitely a ten. Oh, all right. Okay, it's so woke. Okay, but no, it's good. It's got Mondo Gecko. It's got Genghis Frog. It's got Ray Filet. Does that have the alligator with a shotgun? It's of got course. Leatherhead. It's got Wingnut. It's got Bebop and Rocksteady. Does it have Mutagen Man? No, it doesn't have Mutagen Man. All Does right. it have Taka and Razar? No, it doesn't have Taka and Razar. But what it does have it is Slash? a very solid... Yeah, it Slash has there. a very solid sequel... Uh, what's that called? Sequel hook? Sequel hook. Yeah, does, does it's got it, a very solid sequel hook. Which is based on the almost, multiverse, right? No. Does it have Slash? No. Does it have a Triceraton? No. Does it have the Fugitoid? No. Does it have the Pizza Alien? <laughs> no. Does it have the other alien? It doesn't it have like, any aliens. It looks like E.T. and his voice by Tommy Pickles. They want the yeah. No. They set up it's You said they had every they set up Splinter. Right? At the end, or not Splinter. Splinter. Sorry, Shredder. At the end of the film. Oh, Shredder's not even in it. Right. Oh, is Krang like, in it? They hint at Krang. Is Baxter so, Stockman in it? Yes. Interesting. Who's the villain then? Okay. Just all the mutants. Well, yes, yes. mutant mayhem. There is one new mutant that was created by Baxter Stockman. That is like the 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 villain. It's fly Baxter Stockman. Well, it's super fly, but it's not Baxter Stockman. It's a fly that uh, he made. It's not. It's not. I've seen like, the like, action figures. Superfly, a different guy. Is Superfly the one you're talking about? Yeah, Superfly is like the villain. All right, uh, but that's established like two seconds. Of the I movie. thought Baxter Stockman fly was calling himself Superfly now, and I was like, that's no, I don't think so. Okay, is the actual April in it. Don't what does say? That yeah, what does that mean? It's a question from the audience. <laughs> yeah, question from the chat. <laughs> April O'Neil is in it. What does that mean? She's a news reporter, and it's her. So yeah, yes, the actual April is. If it. she's a news reporter, then she's more April than most incarnations of April. I think I don't remember if she. I don't think she I, was she in the 2003 one. The only one I've seen. I have no idea. Yeah. What was her role in the Michael Bay movies? Who fucking cares? No, Megan no one saw Fox. I never saw those or whatever her name is. Yeah, I, I know it's Megan I Fox. Right. To like be all glossy and like bend over in one scene. I don't Just know. like in Transformers One. Speaking of sexy babes, uh, Count, you showed Super Starlet AD. I did. Um, this movie uh, not it's good. Really Ninja Turtles. Not I a good movie. I could not pay attention during I, Super Starlet AD. I had mixed feelings about this. I would like in the beginning. I was like, 
Oh, this is cool. This is like, uh, this is kind of, kind of punk, kind of goofy. Uh, and then as it went on, I was like, is this a movie like for drag queens? This is weird. And then, <laughs> and then as it went on more, it was like, wait a minute, this is a movie for horny sex perverts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's just, but also it's a really boring, bad movie. So uh, yeah, it's just boring. It's bad. There's weird musical interludes that aren't entertaining or fun. Um, it's hard to recommend it. Do I want to go into the plot? Is it even worth it? I don't know. I mean, like I don't know. The, I think the, the premise is interesting. The premise is good. Yeah, it's like a post-apocalyptic. Uh, only women are left. Yeah, men, men are, are cavemen men now. are cavemen, uh, and the 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 women have this kind of like cult around hair color, I don't know, hair color, and like old Hollywood and shit, which is sort of what made me think it was like a a movie by and intended for drag queens because there was kind of this like yeah glamour element to it and campiness but then it just there's just a lot of like softcore pornography and and then yeah. just like it's just not like the fun doesn't really hold up i don't know if i've ever seen a trauma this is trauma right they release it this. is yeah. i don't think i've don't seen like a trauma movies. movie that i've ever liked yeah so. me neither uh I was hoping this would be the one, and it's not. Uh, Repo if you're Man's not? Hmm? what? Repo Man's not trauma. No, I don't think so. No, I don't know. I thought it was. So is trauma just like Sorry. full moon but boring? It's full moon. It's, it's full moon. It's but full moon, but more gross out humor and and lower concept and kind I mean, of I, even cheaper. I think I, I think I like Toxic Avenger. I think I probably like Toxic Avenger, but I don't I think I've seen. We watched that recently. I did not like it. Can I ask a question about Super Starlet AD? Sure. <laughs> what what is does it say? Apocalypse Meow. Because it's like a cat fight. Are there cats in it? Yeah. I don't think there was a cat in it. No. Oh. It's like pussy, Sire after. Yeah, yeah. You know. It's all women. The. The Lords of Acid song. I don't know that. Please tell me I got that right. It looks cool though. It looks like it's gonna be cool. It, Maybe just watch yeah. the first fifteen minutes and then I if you're like me rest. and you and you like women in old timey lingerie and stuff like that, uh you might think this is great because it's women walking around in garters and thigh highs and fucking big bras and shit. It, the movie sucks. Don't watch it. You can just watch the first like three minutes and forty seconds. However long it takes you. Yeah, however long it takes you. Like, don't hold out on yourself. Just go. (laughs) That's all I can recommend. Is this on Tubi? It is on Tubi. There you go. Free. Really? Yeah. Just boot it up and then just like, you know, don't make it last. (laughs) So, (laughs) so count. Not a movie for edging. You, hmm, you're, you're gonna be. You're just. You're gonna get mad. Uh, you. I think you and Slushy watched the final program, and I think. Yeah, Slushy. We, I think it. we want. To, why did? Why did you? Thought it was Slushy? great. What? I think we want to watch this like and discuss it. I do for so real I don't on the podcast. About it now. But uh, yeah, this is not on Tubi, right? No, it used to be on Tubi. Maybe it might have been. It's not at the moment. Good movie. You never seen. I'll just this. say the only issue I had with it was it felt like two movies that were pasted together. But considering the ending, that makes a lot of sense. I could explain it, but I don't think it's worth going into now. Why that is? I mean, Did, I know why that is. It's because the book was fucking weird. Tune back in, folks. Yeah. Did you know this is based on a Michael Moorcock book? Are you, yeah. What's yeah? I did. Book? Yeah. Are you okay? I, yeah, I just, no, I I was asking. Oh yes, because I was yes. looking into it and I was like, oh, huh. a Michael Moore cock book. Yes, Michael Moore cock name. is Count's biggest author hero. Is I love he? him. Oh really? I don't know if he's my biggest, but what? I do love him. He's uh, you know, responsible for Elric, and uh, I'll just say it. Basically, this movie and is a retelling of like the first four Elric stories, but like with a different coat of paint. See, I've heard that that 
that every book Moorcock writes is just an Elric book, but like that doesn't make it a is. whole lot of sense to me. Like the the only it's thing I've read bullshit that you hate, huh? It's multiverse bullshit that you hate. Uh was the only thing I've read of his is um, the Warlord of the Air, which is like a Jules Verne kind of like send up thing. Uh, and I I was having a hard time imagining. <laughs> it's not a book a podcast like anyway. People tied to fate, and you kind of have Elric has his evil sword, and then this it's like an evil woman instead, and she's like serving the same role. Dun, 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 dun. So. Without giving too many spoilers away, it's he tells kind of the same stories. There's someone out there in the audience is getting my jokes. Me too. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know if it's a cheap writing tactic or it's brilliant or what, but I really only read the Elric stuff. I have uh, a quorum book here that I've yet to crack open. And we can go into more detail on this when we cover it, along yeah. with uh, the same director did the Dr. Fives movie, so we thought we could... yeah cover them all at once abominable dr fives one of my favorite movies beautiful uh yeah look i don't know for, uh, we'll be back to this film from trey october non-stop <laughs> horror could be and on a horror the uh main like actor that. in this is john finch who was my favorite version of macbeth unfortunately directed by polanski but it's still really good so hey, you know you can pick your friends. Imagine you can having pick your a nose. You can't pick your director. You don't? Huh? You don't have a favorite version of Macbeth? No. <laughs> What's your favorite Shakespeare? I don't have a favorite Shakespeare. What do I look like? A fucking nerd? He's a pop culture expert, not a culture expert. Yeah. Uh, that's right. My favorite. So, like. My favorite Shakespeare is. Um, oh, shit. What's his name? Slushy, so put that Romeo and Juliet with guns on the list. That I've never seen that. Okay. Buzz Lerman. Buzz Lerman's Romeo and Juliet is my favorite. Is that the director? Shakespeare, yes. Buzz Lerman? Boz. Boz Lerman? Boz Lerman. Do you remember that? Um, I thought you all Romeo hate Leo. Plus Juliet. Do you rem- There's I a do. lot of hate for Leo going around. I don't, you know, I don't That's mind the guy. Me. No, he sucks. He's a bad actor. Um was I gonna? Oh, but you, you know the sunscreen song from like ninety nine yeah, or so. They did it with Yoda. That's yeah, the Yoda with one. Yoda, what? Yoda, you've heard Yoda, Yoda sunscreen. Man. Yoda. You haven't heard Yoda. Yo 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 Yoda. No, 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 I don't. No. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, I thought I played it for you, Mortis, but. We will act Suns- Oh, I think I know. Yeah. Count's the only other person. I, I don't know the sunscreen the thing, though. I don't, Yoda's sunscreen. I don't think I know the original. Song. Well, let me recite it for you here. <laughs> I want to wheel back around to this idea of... Uh... Sunscreen, good. No sunscreen, bad. Rest of advice, based on years of Jedi teaching experience, yes. <laughs> I can't do Yoda, sorry. <laughs> anyway. It was pretty good. No I want to roll back real quick to this concept of like nonstop horror month of October. Mm-hmm. That's when we're going to watch Lunch of Chun Li, right? No. <laughs> no. Because Counts of Rate wouldn't. It. Yeah. I'll watch it. I know you will. Well, if you want to. I've seen re- it twice. If you want to replace me with Count that day. The other way around, you mean? We normally yeah. replace you with Count. So Cyraptor. Yeah. You were <laughs> I saw this. What? You were <laughs> you sounded so upset. Uh you were around for uh how This may be the only movie Beyond the Fog today I've seen. There's a few. What did you think so. about how from the Beyond the Fog? Shitty Civil War one. I, and thought, and, and I didn't think it was that great. No, I think it's going to be controversial. Uh, yeah, I, I didn't think this was good. Oh, okay. you didn't think it cool. was good? Period. Yeah, I thought it was kind of bad. Huh. Gonna be honest. I thought the monster was cool, and I thought yeah. the puppets were. Um, it was like two, two, six-year-olds with their GI Joes just mashing them together. That's what the animation looked like because they were just. It was like fucking, it was sub 
Team America puppeteering. Oh my god. They were just fucking waving them around. They yeah, didn't they weren't even like I like the design of the monster. In any way. It was kind of slow paced and boring and also like kind of a generic story at the same time. So I kind of zoned out. I thought it was going to be an adaptation of uh, the Foghorn by Ray Bradbury. They it say that it to is. Be, it claims that it is, it but isn't. it's not. I'm not familiar Aside with Aside from that having one. a monster in the fog. So. It's like the beast from 20,000 Fathoms, right? Was the movie? A- a- allegedly, that is also based on it. But it's it's just a short story where... I think it's just like there's a dude in an, in a lighthouse, and it's foggy. And he hears what he thinks is a foghorn. Well, it's actually a big monster. I don't remember what happens after he, that. He works and lives in a lighthouse, and the lighthouse right. has a foghorn, which attracts a monster thinking that the monster oh. thinks that the foghorn is like a call, like a love mating call. But So yeah, that doesn't happen. <laughs> yes. It's not this. The monster looks cool. It's got the sticks on its back. As you can see, it looks like it's got a, a big bird made a nest on its back, which is cool. It's like a Japanese blind Loch Ness monster. That's still cool. It's the right. movie's not though. Do you think Godzilla is a Loch Ness monster because he lives in water too? No, Godzilla is not. That doesn't look anything like the Loch Ness monster. He doesn't live in a lock either. He lives in the ocean. Yeah, this thing looked like a Loch Ness monster and lived in like a lock. Hey, I saw a news story the other day that uh, they're they're doing the biggest exploration of Loch Ness ever. I hope they find Nessie. <laughs> She's in already done the exploration. You ever seen Loch Ness there... on a map? Have no, I seen it's it really big map? though, isn't it? It's like a hundred miles long and a half a mile wide. <laughs> okay, it's a river. It just, that's, it that's bisects yeah. the entirety of Scotland. That's basically a river. It's basically a river, but it's a loch. They call it. So and listen. they call it a lock. So listen, I'm going to have a different take on this movie. So this, so this is a oh, short. I, one other thing. One other thing. Yeah. I have to say, this soundtrack was incredible. It oh, didn't yeah. fit the movie at all, but it was great. <laughs> so this is a... We, Slushy sold this to us as an hour-long thing. It's actually half an hour with, oh, an, an, an half a, <laughs> with a half hour making of and a bunch of... Kickstarter backers. This was a this was a crowdfunded. I didn't know, I didn't know that. Didn't, Wait, wasn't the making of also it was half hour. part of the the runtime? Yeah, or was yeah. that a separate thing? It was part of the runtime. No, it was it was all one thing. So the, this is on Tubi, right? Yeah, um, it is. It's a it's a half hour short kaiju film crowdfunded. Uh, as I'm not gonna disagree the story might as well not be there it's very generic uh the human puppets again (laughs) not gonna disagree they don't look great in motion and for the most part they don't move which is nice because they don't look great in motion uh but i think like for the most part, when the humans are on the camera, they're they're just like it's like the back of their head, like, and they're just having a little monologue, and it's it's I don't know, I think it's fine. Um, I there were a lot of parts, and there were let's say four parts in the movie that I I had tears in my eyes from the just like physicality of the movie and like how how much work like went into the monster and the environment that I could see, you know. So I liked it on that level. I didn't think it was great, but you know, if you like I I think it's I think it's me, worth I a think. watch if you're into yeah. giant monsters. Uh and it's it's not going to take up too much of your time. And there's like like the only thing about it that I re- kind of didn't like is some of the compositing of like smoke effects was a little hinky. But like for the most part, I thought it was very beautiful. There's definitely a, like an artisan artisanship. Is that a word to it? Like that you can definitely tell it's yeah. a passion project. I was gonna say craftsmanship, but it didn't seem uh, um pretentious enough. <laughs> 
Uh, what I thought the behind think, the scenes stuff was boring too. By well, the way, like, it, nothing. Uh, it could have been <laughs> edited better. Yeah, right. yeah. I, like a lot of it was. It was kind of interesting, just like the to see like basically start to finish the whole shit they went through to just get this thing made. You know, like <laughs> it, it, was, it was just a bunch of B roll, though it wasn't like right. It, 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 it felt any like sort yeah. of narrative whatsoever. Yeah, yeah. So it, just like eh. other than linear. <laughs> like, yeah, Sushi, Sushi, what did you think? I loved every second of it, start to finish. I love miniatures. Anytime we watch Ultraman, I'm constantly typing in all caps. Look at that miniature. That's I true. love monster suits. I love puppets. Yes, it was a little boring. Story wise, it was long enough wise. to be boring to me. But it looked very cool. I was bored. And it was. Oh, it was a sight to behold. Again. What was the monster's name? Like Nebula or something? Nebula, yeah. Like I think it was Jesse. Jesse. I thought the monster was whiny. <laughs> <laughs> the monster has oh, a good actually, roar. The monster, the monster... That had a great roar. Yeah, the roar was awesome. That had a good roar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like that. I don't know if I could get quite. That's, that's why they had to legally to say it was like an adaptation of that fog story. So I can't fully put the microphone in my mouth. You did good. It, but I did as probably scared somebody Definitely listening, could. but I don't know. When wake up when you guys <laughs> when you watch it back, don't thumbs down the the YouTube for scaring you. Yeah, I don't know. It's uh, they they went to the uh, no I can't <laughs> like in the making of there's uh, like they went to various conventions and there's all these shots of like people dressed up as bleach or like Alucard or whatever <laughs> just like there's scoping one out their thing and they're like please please crowdfund our movie there's one I recognize but I can't remember who it was. Yeah, I remember. Oh. I remember something being recognized, but I don't remember. I recognize very little. Um, I'm big into anime now. Yeah, is that a name, new thing? I can name up to eight animes. Can you tell me anything about Jujutsu Kaisen, which is in the Fortnite now? Because it just looks like no. Naruto. Have you heard of this I thing? Can't I can tell you about Ahsoka. We'll do that right now. We'll do that a little later. <laughs> I have that at the end, unless you want to do it now. I don't. I don't, need, I don't need to do it at all. Okay. Well, count you. Yes. You showed you were you were sick, and your internet was. was breaking. Uh, you showed yeah. horror of Dracula, which I could never remember if I'd seen this, but I have seen it three times, and I don't. I still don't remember anything. About it. <laughs> I've seen it many, many times. It is my go-to comfy movie when I'm sick. Um, and I didn't realize I had COVID at the time of this, but yeah, my internet was going down and I was like, I had a splitting headache and I just wanted to show this fucking movie and the odds were against me and we finally got through it. Uh, it's Peter Cushing as Van Helsing and Christopher Lee as Dracula. It's a hammer horror movie. It's the first hammer horror movie that's about vampires and dracula i think it's from the 50s so that's how early it is and i love this movie i just love everything about it uh it's not a super accurate dracula adaptation but it's not super inaccurate there's no quincy morris so and they there's no uh there's arthur holmwood though but yeah. he's not like a uh not trying to get what's her name not trying to Lucy? woo mina oh well all the names are all mixed up so Lucina. Right. um yeah it's it's a it's a weird be, adaptation yeah, because be. harker dies pretty early <laughs> and then it just turns into van yeah, helsing harker thing is very weird um i don't think Christopher Lee's Dracula is very good. I don't know. Is that just me? Like, 
Um, the well, first there's... the first scene that he's in, he's just like, "Hello, welcome to the castle. Uh, you you can I'll get your room. Uh, thanks. There's I'll some see you in the morning. Like that's... reasons for it in a way. <laughs> he would get pissed because they he wanted to have he wanted to have a lot more dialogue and uh, lines and like they would cut it. So then he would just like be mad. So you think he's he's just half assing it? He might be. In oh. later movies, if he didn't like the line or the page, he doesn't say... There's one of the movies he doesn't say a word because he didn't like it, the script. <laughs> wow, real Because he loves Dracula, but, like, he just... He wanted to do the character, like, well, and then, like, he would just be mad and pissy about it. Like, his... Uh, whenever he, like, Drax out in the movie and he just, like, makes the scary face and has the blood, it's like, that's... That's good, and that's iconic i think but like he's got the stature like as far as just being a nobleman or like any kind of character at all i wasn't really getting anything from him on that yeah but i I mean i agree with that uh do you like cushing as helsing oh he's great yeah i mean i think he's fucking peter cushing might be one of my easily top five favorite actors of all time but just, just uh, them, a lot of, a lot of like red paint, blood that looks like red paint. That's yeah. You know. I only know these two actors from Star Wars. Of course, you do. And not even Lord of the Rings. Lord of the Rings, I guess. Okay. I think that and not even Top Secret or Doctor sp- Who. Speaking of Star Wars, Ahsoka. Doctor Who. When's Christopher Lee and Doctor Who? Peter Cushing played the Doctor. Well, I know that. Two Doctor Who movies. Those aren't canon. No, he didn't. Yeah. Yes, he did. Was he the War Doctor? (laughs) No. No, that's that's the other guy from Lord of the Rings. They made like two American Doctor Who movies back in the day. What? What? Not Gandalf. Peter Cushing. Tarkin. No, I know, but. What? Who's the other guy? What did you Christopher say? Christopher Lee character? is Count Dooku, who is Saruman. Right. I, but, yes. <laughs> Thank you. What, I don't remember what I said. What did I say? Who did you say the war doctor was? Oh, the, wasn't it, isn't it John Noble? It's John Hurt. Is it John? I always get those two confused for some reason. It's the elephant man. John Hurt. The elephant man. Was he in, was it John Noble in, in, John Hurt's uh, an alien, which we discussed who's on the podcast. fucking Denethor in Lord of the Rings? John Noble. Okay, sorry. I always get them confused. because John Hurt's the guy who chest bursts, right? They're yeah. both John and then a word. It's Kane. Kane is deified. The guy who chest bursts. I'm sorry. Yes, yes. Okay, but then, but then Bilbo is the robot. Yes. Okay. Okay, I was just making sure. Um, yeah, I was thinking of the the Hobbit trilogy, Bilbo. No, that is Martin. What Freeman? When you said that, that's, right? That's Jim from the Office. It's Martin Freeman, but then also I said Martin Short to myself, and that made me laugh really hard. That would be funny. <laughs> so, uh, did you watch any horror Dracula? I could not pay attention to this film. I'm sorry. I don't know what was going on with me that night, but it was really I could like. I I, I, I think how on. many Hammer movies have you seen? Count? Have you seen all uh, of them? I think I've seen. No, I can't say I've seen all of them because some asshole will be like, "Have you seen this one?" <laughs> I might be like, "No." Yes, I guess I haven't seen that one. The one that's lost media. Uh, I haven't seen like. So I've seen every of the first. I've seen all the Frankensteins, I can say that. And I've mm-hmm. seen all the Draculas. I've seen the first Mummy. I've seen all the other vampire movies, which Cushing and Lee both appear in. I, I know Cushing does. I can't say for sure Lee does. Not as Dracula, though, and not as Vampire. Have Helsing. you seen uh, Lust for a Vampire? If it's a, a Hammer Horror movie and it's a vampire movie, I'm sure I have, yeah. Uh, okay. I've seen the Lesbian Vampire Trilogy. I've seen... Uh, I bet you have. Captain Kronos. <laughs> I've seen she and she too. Cause See, I think but, I've, I've only seen this and uh, Dracula 1970 AD. I think that one's so kind of bad, but I like it. <laughs> They're all kind of bad, right? 
like, but the, there's like a huge. I love the colors in this movie, and yeah. the whole Hammer aesthetic is very appealing to me. Yeah, it's very Technicolor. Yeah, but not in a nauseating way, because sometimes it can right. be. But <laughs> no. uh, this is like hits it right and does it right. It's it's basically like Castlevania as movies to me is Hammer Horror. Yeah, if Castlevania was fucking boring. Uh, well, the ones that slushy like are. <laughs> I like all of them. Latency of innocence <laughs> on the PS2. But uh, I can say like the Mummy one. Okay, so Dracula, Mummy, and Frankenstein, they all star Lee and Cushing as like the main characters. Yeah. So check those out, people, if you haven't. Where's the wolf, man? They have one wolf movie and it kind of sucks. Is there an Invisible Man? There is no Invisible Man. Isn't There's a... Uh... What the fuck? Creature from Black Lagoon? No. I can't remember now. Medusa? Yeah, the... there, that's the Gorgon. Which oh, they, they Cushing is in. Medusa the Phantom of the Opera? Huh. I don't know. There might be one of those. I don't know. The Zombie? <laughs> the Zombie. <laughs> Caramella Creeper? That's the new uh, cereal. Yeah. Speaking of cereal, how is Snoop cereal? I haven't had it yet. Stay tuned. Looking I'll forward to the know. report. So I got the one that's uh, Fruit Loops with marshmallows in it. Fruit Loops with marshmallows. So that's a brand new thing. That doesn't exist. Uh, no, the I think they have Fruit Loops with marshmallows. They have. They put fucking marshmallows in every cereal now. Like they have. A variant of every cereal with with marshmallows now. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> so we've all we all watched this one. Uh, Watch out, we're mad with Bud Bud Spencer and Terrence. Hill. Like a king in my buggy. Right. This is this is a movie that I've I found out about like maybe three years ago. Uh. And I'm glad to show it to people. And this cured my COVID. <laughs> what, what, this seemed good, but I was playing think? Quake 2 at the time, so I was only like half paying attention. I love this movie. I thought it was incredible. It's great. Fantastic film. So, Bud and Terrence, uh, they're in about 50 movies together. They always play the exact same characters. Are you exaggerating, or is it actually that many? It may be like forty. I thought it, I thought it was like eight. <laughs> okay, <laughs> like maybe eight good ones. That's cool. I don't know. Okay, uh, they're in a lot of. I had never together. heard of them until. Well, most people hadn't because they're like big in Germany, and they're like these are Italian movies. <laughs> okay, and this was the first comedy I've seen with them because I've seen one, the one, one or two westerns with them. Did you find out about it from Sinertia? Yeah, Morris, or? Okay. I did. Our, our mutual friend, Sinertia. Uh, we'll, we'll have to have him on. <laughs> yeah. He uh, doesn't know who I am. He, he doesn't. He bones. <laughs> he doesn't even know I exist. Um, they, they, it's, they are primarily comedy action superstars like basic like think any jackie chan movie any you know any of the like what are they called the three the the three dragons what do they call those guys <laughs> the three ninjas no with uh Sam, Sam? Sam hung and jackie chan the four, and the other guy the four celestial kings un, UN bow or whatever i don't know where it is. oh my god well anyway it's it's like those, but they don't actually know a martial art, so they just do three stooges shit, <laughs> basically. Listen, it's really Bud, good though. Bud Spencer did fifty billion overhead hammer blows on the top of people's heads so that Jackie Chan could kick a chair at some guy. It's just different cultures. Different cultures like, come out with different stuff. Watching this was so refreshing and amazing, and you have fight scenes that sure are a little bit silly, but they don't cut like every two seconds. You can actually see what the fuck's going on, and it was really good and enjoyable. And they felt like badasses, and I loved it. 
they're they're always very capable. You know, they they never. They're nonplussed. They're nonplussed. Like, yeah. <laughs> like Bud in particular always is just Watch over out, everything. Non-plussed. Yeah. Uh, I recommend most of these can, guys' movies. Uh, I can never remember what nonplussed means because I think it means the opposite of what I thought it meant. Well, if you're if you're looking at the stream, that like this is nonplussed. Um. You know, when they're sitting in the bar and everything's going to hell and they don't care and they're just eating and drinking, it's nonplussed. That's it's like a half step below disinterested. Okay, but see, that's not what nonplussed means. It's not? No. What's it mean? <laughs> it means yeah, surprised know. and confused so much they are unsure how to react. Okay, so that's like this. That's like this then. Hmm. Well. Huh. I guess I've been using yes. it wrong. Like everyone uses it wrong to the point where I think that the fucking dictionary just says, yes, it, that was definition one I just gave. And now definition two, informal North American, stupid Americans, uh, not disconcerted, unperturbed. Right. Well, that's so, how I was using it. There's two. Yes. There's two definitions that mean the complete Thankfully opposite. we're all American. Uh, the four of us and, I wasn't sure. American English. And I wasn't trying to catch anybody out. I was just language is a living, a living thing. Allegedly. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. I brought it up. <laughs> it's fine. I, I, genu- I genuinely I'm was fine. not sure. It's, I didn't I'm just know either. Fun. Have you seen the Westerns that they're in Mortis? Uh, I've seen, they call me Trinity, which is, which yeah, is a Western, but it's, Wait, so you said you, it's still basically a comedy. Well, like it's very similar to this tone, I, but, but I haven't seen the like that's not what period piece, I guess. I don't know what the fuck. Right. Name. I get. Yeah, they they, they are in today. they are in some Westerns together that are not funny <laughs> and like also alone. They are in Westerns that are not meant to be funny. Like Terrence Hill is Django in at least one Django movie. And I've seen I've seen a lot of Terrence Hill westerns that are not comedic. Yeah, but they're not always funny. But when they're together, it's usually Is, funny. They're usually going to go in a room with a bunch of guys, and then the camera's going to go outside the room, and guys are going to fly outside the windows, and, and it's going to play the theme song from the film, which has already played five to six times prior. To the that's that's kind of something that's wait, 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 unique wait. to this, really. I mean, they, yeah, a, a lot of I'm these movies thinking, have wait, great soundtracks. Wait, wait, wait. Nobody, not Trinity. What's up, sorry, after? Oh, my name is, yeah, okay. Is Django not a black guy? That's Django not a black guy right <laughs> Is it only in Django Unchained? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Oh, shit. He's originally Franco Nero. Franco Italian Nero from guy. Enter the Ninja, who plays a white ninja. Oh my god. Is the original Who Django. Catch Blanco Nero? <laughs> Why would you how would you think that he's a black guy when Django Fett predates him? <laughs> Django <laughs> Fett has nothing to do with him. Yes, it does. No, it really he, doesn't. He, there's no yes, D. It, yeah, that's where George got the name is off Django. No, they Are you just gonna listen to everything fucking George Lucas says about his own films? What are you trying to what are you what? Well, but the original Django is not Maori either. What's your? Uh, that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> no, like, but he's like a bounty I hunter. And I don't they doubt just... that Django Fett was named after Django, but that, that, that what does that have to do with that has the to do with race of like, the character? Because he's white back then, is what I'm saying. Like before, but Django, Django and Chain is like. <laughs> I know, but Django and Chain is much newer than fucking Django Fett is. Django and Chain is a I film. Don't see the connection uh made by you, said, you, you never knew he was white Django is a character like james bond right i so, know but I th- yes i realize it's, well if you it's, listen to people tell it now james bond can't be fucking black either well i keep hearing that he's gonna be but then like I, maybe he's I not i don't know i know <laughs> james is like a, bond like shouldn't be black because he's really racist in the books and it might be books the books but, yeah who James Bond? Yes. Oh, he's racist. Weird. <laughs> kind of racist, yeah. Okay. Well, you know, I, I understand. By an affluent British man, so it's not surprising. Uh, 
I understand that Django is like a legacy character that's been portrayed in under multiple studios under, with multiple actors. Yeah. I just didn't know who any of the actors were, I guess. That's well, all. I'm going to go back to house. Why is Slushy saying I can't trust George Lucas for naming Django Fett after Django the, the cowboy? What does I, that mean? Yeah. I, I'm... I think I think Slushy's saying that maybe there was nothing behind it. Maybe George Lucas was just like putting syllables together, and he was like, "Oh, ding, ding, dang, ding, ding, dang, fet, uh, blung, blung, oh. blung, blong, fet, uh, Django, uh, fet." It's, oh, that's definitely sounds good. a Django the movie bounty hunter. Maybe he was thinking like Dingo, because I think New Zealand is close to Australia. I think George Lucas. Uh, names things very similarly to a controversial author of recent years. Don't you? Well, fucking Christopher Lee is Count Dooku. Okay. Don't like dare. it's not like, like he's a fucking count after playing Dracula for 50 years. So anyway, Count uh, we, <laughs> We found out while we were watching this movie that it got remade last year, uh, and it's on Netflix. So we'll probably watch that at some point. I would like to, <laughs> but we can't serious. watch Legend of Chun Li. Oh my god! Is Legend of Chun Li on Netflix? What if just me and Slushy I got it on DVD and, and Blu-ray? Somebody has do, to watch it because segment. I can't like deal with this shit anymore. Yeah, I think I, I think the two of you should watch all it. Of my friends and we talk about it as like a brief movie. The two of you can talk about. It. No, I think I me and Slushy can have my friend. can have a a side the Slushy minute. So, yeah, like no, like a full like a, a you know when they do like the <laughs> the reports from on location on the news and they do a whole segment that could be like that, like the Jeff Keeley uh, segment in the Kojima podcast. Well, I don't know about that. No, no, <laughs> Jeff Keeley. Did you see talking two talking. people jumped on stage with him again? Well, I saw the first one. What happened again? <laughs> Who was no, the second I one? I didn't notice. It was two guys. It was like today. Oh, today. Oh, I didn't know there. Was, I didn't know anything was going on today. Fucking Gamescom or something. Why does this keep happening to him? I don't know. Because the the security the one bad, kid I think. emboldened everybody else. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess they talked about Bill Clinton or something. Anyway, well, that was that was the last one. Yeah, it was this, this one too. Oh, something, really? Some, something's going on. Hmm. Kids memeing. No, this is like a serious protest against Bill Clinton. Well, we got to do something to get Bill Clinton out of office. <laughs> do you think we can get Bill Clinton on the podcast? I hope so. I want to ask him what his favorite get George movie Bush is. on the podcast. He just wants to talk about fucking westerns. I think it would be funnier. Oh, if they're spaghetti westerns, I'll talk about them. No, these it's, are if fucking it's John Texas, Wayne. Fuck that. Texas westerns. Fuck John Wayne. Yeah, fuck John Wayne. Fuck you, John Wayne. <laughs> fuck you, John Wayne. I hope you die. Yeah. You old horny slut. <laughs> so, Is he still alive? No. No, he okay. died in the fifties. No, he nice. didn't, because he Mutronics. He attacked that uh, that lady who <laughs> accepted the Oscar for what's oh, his face? God. Yeah, Marlon Brando. Yeah, and that was in like nineteen eighty or something. Like Jeez, that. he died in seventy nine. Oh, was that no? Was... It wasn't Marlon Brando. Marlon Brando's cool. No, it, a Clint Eastwood. Yeah. I was thinking of. It was John. It wasn't Clint. Wayne... It was John Wayne and not Clint Eastwood. Yeah. I'd believe either one. I like Clint, but he was in Spaghetti Western, so it's okay. You know, all I'm saying is if you, if you put the L and the I and Clint close together, you get his real name. Think about it. <laughs> this is another movie we all watched together, The Giver. I just liked the German poster better, uh, so that's what we have here. I missed the first 20 minutes of this because I went to CBS. Clint Eastwood? Oh my god! <laughs> we'll slow on the uptake. I was I was waiting to see how long I should wait. Um, 
This is a weird movie. <laughs> so, this yeah, this yeah. was cool. Uh, this one was good. Uh, it felt very much like Screaming Mad George was directing it, which I believe he did. So. Yeah, uh, famous makeup or uh, special effects rubber guy, Screaming Mad George. Uh, PlayStation frequently director. Frequently, what's the word? Collaborator with uh, Brian Yuzna, who direct, who produced this. Uh, <laughs> like this came out in 1991, and it's apparently kind of a. This is an anime. This is a live action movie of an anime. Uh, this feels like a something that was made in the aftermath of the turtles movie to cash in on that. And apparently that's what it was. <laughs> the mm-hmm. Tonally, this is very weird because you have like a goofy kids, stupid martial arts, like stupid piece of crap. But then there's like extremely realistic, <laughs> like body horror gore. <laughs> It's yeah. It's very odd. Uh Mark Hamill's in it. He has a pistol. It's kind of like an R-rated Power Rangers in a lot of ways. It's like yeah, but it's like a PG thirteen rated is it's Power weird. Rangers. Yeah, it's not because really, like, yeah, it's, because nothing PG-13. nothing really happens that would give it an R, but it's still like <laughs> it's I don't know. Uh, I thought I was tonally awkward. I don't like it. It's it is extremely tonally awkward. Like it, the the suits are really good. The suits are yeah, cool. it had, it had it fantastic that. suits. It's got except for the Giver suit, which like the, the suit thing? itself, the suit itself was great. The person in it was very round. What? You didn't like all the poses. Don't <laughs> that one pose? I should say pose. You thought he was. Like the pose? I thought he was uh, schlubby. I don't like the. Think he was he in had, shape. The Giver had a, like a barrel chest. The whole. Th- well, that's because there's a blazer in there. <laughs> you know. Well, like a barrel torso, I guess. Like from from the waist to neck, it was all one straight line. So, like, he was round. He had a round silhouette because in the film, the kid who becomes the Giver is practicing Aikido and he has this very stupid round stance that he keeps going into. <laughs> it looks right, which is not something the Giver does in the anime. It's just like, it's a really dumb looking stance. Um, the like, film just felt like a mess. It, I don't know. Yeah. It had, it has a lot of cool actors in it. You know, it's got, it's got the guy from Reanimator, the bad guy. It's got uh, and Jeffrey Combs. It's got God Jeffrey it. Combs. It's got oh the other guy, Mark it's, Hamill. It's yeah, Mark Hamill was not great <laughs> in this. He turned know. into a worm. That was cool. Yeah, you can see on the poster here uh, in the lower right. The, he, oh yeah, he turned into a like a horrible worm creature, which is. Like that it was, was a it was a grotesque transformation, and any yeah. child watching this would be terrified and yeah, a little body horror for scarred. you. Scarred. Um, like that was probably the biggest, you know, <laughs> the violator. Uh, Lin- Linnea Quigley is in there just real briefly. Yeah, uh, she's a little cameo. I put the French poster in the Discord. Have you seen that? Let's bring it up here. Yo, certain's mutants, Sont plus frappes, K doubtress. So is that the fucking <laughs> their Breakfast Club. Oh, is it? They're they're it's doing a quite, they're doing a goofy quite, pose. Close. Like the the guy the who looks front. like a gremlin raps several times, and it like whoever wrote his rap. Has never listened to rap. Was it white? <laughs> yeah, uh, it was a really bad rap. Um, just like the last creature, the, there's like a really big last creature, kind of similar to Hakider that we watched the other week. Uh, it looked pretty good. Like 
it's like stuff about this movie looks good and it's cool, but just like, it's so tonally weird. And like it apparently sold reasonably well because anime companies just like continued to shower Brian Yuzna with anime properties. So like he, <laughs> he eventually made crying Freeman, which is like not a great movie, but it's a better movie. Uh, I don't even know what Crying Freeman is. Like, is it is that also the name of the anime? Yeah, it's a uh, it's an anime about an assassin who strips naked to do assassination, and then like there's a babe who looks like the Baroness from GI Joe who also gets naked, and it's yeah, cool. and, you know, it's an anime manga. Uh, right. It's got Mark DeCascos as Crying Freeman. They should let him do Lupin. Freeman's mind. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you wanted me on this. I hope someone in the audience gets it. I get it. Slushy, Slushy probably gets, gets it. it, but yeah. We've um, been talking about it nonstop. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe don't watch Guyver. There's a sequel to it that might be better. Dude, I say watch Guyver. I thought it was incredible. Yeah. This is a rare situation where I'm the only one that likes it. I thought it was fine. What's the Hills Have Eyes guy's name? Michael Berryman. Berryman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, see, I said it at the same time. That's how, you don't <laughs> you don't know if I'm fooling. Uh, <laughs> Very clever. Like Michael Berryman is is like the main villain of the movie, and he's dressed like a Cenobite, and he talks a lot, and he just sounds like a normal dude, which is weird. I don't think. <laughs> So weird. He he's a, a normal guy. He's a human I, being. I know. I feel, I don't yes. think he has a lot of speaking roles, though, right? Like the, he doesn't just talk in Hills Wait, Have Eyes or Barbarians, right? He just has he, a condition where he doesn't have like hair. Yeah, but no, this I agree that it's weird that he talks normal. Like, that's he, like, like that's Michael Berryman me. or not, like that kind of like this guy who looks like a Cenobite and is evil, like shouldn't just sound like a dude. <laughs> you know, it's like. The character see it. No, sounds a little. That's... He's a living legend. We need to have him on the show. He's not going to come on now. Well, come on to talk I to me. Call him a, a, a freak looking Cenobite. Well, because he's wearing a, a long black leather Costume. jacket. <laughs> like, not. Yeah, so know. does Neo. Why don't you compare him to Neo? Because <sighs> Neo wasn't out yet. Good good guys didn't wear long black leather bondage jackets in 1991. You know? I, I wasn't alive. Yes, you were. I don't know. <laughs> so. I was watching Pee Wee's Playhouse in 91. So, Count, I think you're the only one who watched Crawl Space here. Yeah. Pee Slushy was there. This was the full uh, moon Claus Kinski movie. I had it on. What? Is this actually full moon or is it Empire? I don't know. It's Charles Band. Yeah, like Band produced it. Yeah. And uh, he directed Klaus Kinski? How did that he, go? He, Band didn't direct no, I don't think he Klaus directed Kinski. It. No. So Charles Band on the podcast has this recurring story that he tells everyone about how he had to break up a fight between Kinski and the director. <laughs> so he wasn't the director, but he was the producer. Um, uh, this movie sucked. Don't watch it. I watched the trailer. Trailer's uh, good. Yeah, it looks it didn't good, look though. bad. Um, uh, you don't really see any of the kills. The, the stuff that you do see is very toothless. There's no real gore or blood. Um, it's kind of boring as fuck. So uh, it's, it's not good. It seems like from good. the trailer, the premise is that Klaus Kinski has like an evil house or apartment, which he has set up traps in and he just kills people with traps. Yeah, but you don't ever see any of it. You see him like crawling around, but like you don't see them actually dying the traps or anything. They're just like near the end of the film. You have your final girl and she opens up a couple of doors and like everyone's just already dead. Hmm. It's very dumb. Unless I spaced out folks, which is possible. <laughs> Like, I had COVID. You see, like, I want to say in the trailer, you see, like, 
two kills, but not in like detail. I don't you do know. see some kills, but not like of the final people. It's hard to explain unless you've seen the movie, but don't say it because it's bad. Not worth the time. Just better watch Nosferatu. Well, how is how is Kinski? Kinski's good. He's always good, but it's really not even worth watching for him. All right. Well, I don't know. I can't recommend it. Is it on Tubi? It was on Tubi. Um. Who is Klaus Kinski? Famous actor I, he, who is incredibly hard me. to work with. <laughs> oh. He worked a lot with Werner Herzog. Yeah. He's the guy he from... He made uh, Werner Herzog who he is. He's the guy from... Uh, he broke him. Uh, what's it called? Was he in Fitzgerald, though? He he's in, the, yeah, he's the main yes. guy in Fitzgerald. I hear the yes. wrath of God. That as well. He's also known as Feratu. Which, uh, Slushy, I don't recommend because it's it's boring. Oh, like the remake? Is this like a new no Yeah. Well, from different? like the 70s. Yeah. Which is not the one that... It's not from 1922. It's not the famous film. film. Yeah. Willem Dafoe? It's not the Max Shrek one, and it's not the Willem Dafoe one from the 90s. No, it's from like 70s or 80s. I was going to watch that one. The Willem Dafoe Which one? one? At some point in my life. What is that movie called? called? Shadow of the Vampire? Yeah. yeah. Shadow of the Vampire. That's about the making of the original one, right? The 22 one? Yes. That, that's a yes, good movie. But... <laughs> okay. That's good. The Werner Herzog, Klaus Kinski knows Ratu is excellent. I just thought Slushy would hate it. Oh, that's also Herzog? Okay. Yeah. Oh. The music in that is amazing. I bet it's not as amazing as the, the Howl from the Fog music. The Howl from Beyond well, the Mist or whatever. There is a, I don't know how familiar with Kate Bush, but she takes a piece of the Nosferatu soundtrack and uses it in one of her songs. Oh. I've but listened to most well, of her albums. The, the Hurt Song. And I don't, I don't know about that. I think uh, it's well, Waking the Witch. I can't say for sure, but I think it's on Hounds of Love somewhere. The, the Gorillas used Day of the Dead soundtrack. They did, and I love Day of the Dead. So speaking of great music, <laughs> here's a movie that Count showed us is uh, Radioactive Dreams. Oh, yeah. Which I'd never heard of in my life. Oh, this is the one I skipped. You shouldn't have skipped this one. I know. <laughs> well, maybe you should have. I had to. Um, I had to. This, was, this is... Uh, I think this is the best Albert Pune movie yeah, uh, he is, I didn't believe you that it was him. He is a director who like usually has a really good premise and sort of doesn't deliver on it. But like this is a this was really good, and I didn't I didn't pay like super attention to it. So like I'm definitely gonna watch this again. But like as the movie went on, I was like, wait a minute, I should be paying attention. To this. It's. Uh, it's basically as this poster says, there are two guys in the post nuclear apocalypse who grew up reading dime novels. So they think that they're private eyes and it's just them like dealing with weird shit in the apocalypse. Yeah. Count as I like the streets it. of fire thing. What? Which was really cool. Yeah. As, as count count pointed out while we were watching it, that like, like at, when they start the movie, they're like, real innocent dorks and right. they're just like real schmucks and have like they, <laughs> they have this detective lingo but they're not you know they're not hard boiled at all but as the movie goes on and they get in like bad situations and have bad experiences they become more hard boiled and Count pointed out that like the lighting starts becoming more stark and they're like more in shadow and they have they cast longer shadows <laughs> so, like, yeah they beca it becomes that's really cool. noir and the like the movie the movie reaches a point where it gets it becomes very similar to streets of fire like it has the same kind of like look like it's very dark but like really well lit uh and uh, like there's a lot of uh like the soundtrack is incredible um I think it was all made for the movie because I, it's on YouTube, but it's like an LP rip and there's like skips in it. So hmm. <laughs> I was listening to it this morning. Um, I think all the songs were made for the movie because 
there's just stuff in the lyrics that's like about the movie. <laughs> so, I'll listen to it because I like the soundtrack during the movie. So yeah, like some of it's diegetic, like Streets of Fire. It, it, like it, it has this mix of sort of oldie timey, uh, old Yellow Eyes is back type music, <laughs> and then like, and then like just eighties pop that's really good. Uh, th- I don't know. This is a very interesting movie. If you're tired of a boy and his dog, I would say check out Radioactive Dreams. Yeah, I gotta watch that. I gotta read that. I just got that. What? A boy in his blob. A boy in his dog. Probably. Maybe. (laughs) Probably inspired by that famous set phrase. Yeah. Similar. Similarly to how Django Fett may be named after Django, but has nothing to do with him. They're both in his hunters. May have been named after a boy and his dog. Django Fett has that poncho. What fucking poncho? I don't think he has a poncho. He does have that poncho. Um, what poncho? I gotta Google it. Let me Google <laughs> Here's it. An interesting thing. Uh, I was I was looking into pirating this movie because it's not on Tubi. Um, it's like a bantha. It's on there's, YouTube, though. Oh, is it? Okay. Yeah. There's a. Uh, there's a Japanese laser disc of this that like people were talking about like it was some kind of holy grail and apparently what it it, it edits out it it adds more stuff about like the two guys being horny <laughs> and like cuts out some stuff about them searching for their dads and takes out some characters and there's there's a large beast at some point that's out of the Japanese version uh the Japanese version has a different ending uh which this movie ends in a musical number so <laughs> I could see I could see how that would be something that an alternate version might change but I don't know just interesting uh Albert Pune of course the recently deceased Director of Doll Man and Nemesis and Arcade, Arcade, yeah, many, many films that like we kind of like wanna, <laughs> we wanna like more than we yeah. are able to like. We uh, like the concept. Oh, the, maybe. this movie has a Brick Bardo in it. I uh, Slushy was looking up. This is, I guess, the first movie with Brick Bardo in it. Like, yep, almost every Albert Pune movie has a character named Brick Bardo. This was like his second movie, also. Um, I don't know, just, just an interesting trajectory, <laughs> an interesting career. Uh, Nemesis is good, though. I don't know. Like, I haven't if, seen that. If I we, have I? No, I don't think so. Well, there's five of them. There's five Nemesis movies? Yeah. Huh. Well, the first one's good. The guy no, who the guy who produced this like produced basically everything Albert Pune ever directed, and then like the Last Jedi. So that was <laughs> that was an interesting what? thing on IMDb. Yeah, I don't know. Just hmm. just, just looking up names. Weird. Um, Speaking of the Last Jedi. Yeah. Speaking of the last Speaking Jedi, of Django Fett's poncho. Uh, th- yeah, I posted it. Yeah, let me Someone let me get the let poncho. me get the poncho. On I'm here. looking at it. The poncho on the stream right now. Uh, probably really something that you just see in like a trading card. Holy shit! Uh, there's the one shot where he's no, 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 fifty no, no, no. feet away from the yeah. camera in the background. Put the other. It's right on. above that. Okay. Well, it's still he's a bounty hunter. It's westerny. You can't even prove that's Django Fett. Like, what are you talking about? That's him. Good, I could use a new horse be? blanket. Who else would that be? That Any be one of the... Uh, that's definitely Django Fett. I can't remember the wolf that's guys. That's Django that Fett. Are... He's next to fucking Dracula. He's also next to Poggle the Lesser, though. No one knows who that is. <laughs> the guy next to him. That's Dracula. That's Dooku. Uh, Dracula? Speaking of George Lucas not knowing 
or or not knowing what he's doing <laughs> name wise he calls he pronounces dooku dooku constantly and he's he dooku. calls gungans gungungs 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 so he doesn't know what the hell he's talking about so the movie that got count banned uh from the website for a probationary period of three days is you got banned over this is my i'm telling you is microwave massacre over, well he was massacre. in the movie yeah i got banned over microwave massacre uh what happens in the end <laughs> we'll get well, to the that. end of the movie is that those two construction worker friends come to see him at his house um they find him dead on the ground from like a heart attack and then his wife's head her eyes like light up red uh -huh. this movie sucked <laughs> uh it wasn't worth getting banned over and i, I was having a lot of fun watching it this movie's terrible how do you what it was fun you've seen no. this before count this is the second time you've seen this i know I got tricked into watching it again from my own brain. This is a this is a horror spoof, horrible send up, uh, with with some sexiness in a 1979 style way. Uh, yeah, a guy is uh, in a relationship with his wife, married, I guess you could say. <laughs> He's in a relationship Sorry, with his I wife. I don't know why that got me. <laughs> Uh, uh, it's he like, hates her. He she hates him. She always packs him like ridiculous lunches, and he just wants simple, unhealthy lunches. She cooks everything in the microwave. He he doesn't like that. He ends up killing her and ends up eating her. And the, then he gets like a taste for flesh. the The main character of this movie is basically like Frank Rizzo or uh, Kissel from the Jerky Boys. Just man, my old fucking lady. Uh slap her silly you know. yeah <laughs> it's like this i don't know played like honey snowman. honeymooners type kind of <laughs> played vibe. by the voice of frosty the snowman uh there's there's a lot of boobs there's a lot Happy of like boob birthday. grabbing uh there's a lot of just crappy gore goofy goofy film do you think frosty the snowman said happy birthday cuz he was just born i just I always thought he was yes. just confused. <laughs> no, it's That's... it's because we don't actually he was know. Being born, we'd have to ask the director, but he might not. We even just know. have to let me look up a uh, the Frosty the Snowman Wikipedia and yeah, post check it out. Uncited shit in the, the Discord like that there. proves anything. Uh, let me look up the citations. <laughs> Can I make a completely unrelated to anything? Yes, uh, please comment. Uh, I was. Uh, I found out today that Al Roker is on the villains wiki. What? <laughs> like I'm not as gonna provide, himself? I'm not going to provide any further context. As himself? There's a page for Al. I'm not going to provide any further context. Oh my god. As, as himself, yes. Okay. Huh. Good job, Al. I hope he's still redeemable. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, don't... Al Roker, not on the villains wiki. Who? Matt Lauer. Oh. <laughs> An actual real Ooh. life villain. Oh my god. Who's what? I don't know things. I'm sorry. He's he was one of the hosts on the Today Show. Oh. Contemporaneously with Al Roker. Why is he, he a real life button villain? in his desk? He's a, could shut the door and yeah, he's like a, allegedly. He's like a Harvey Weinstein allegedly creep. Allegedly, allegedly, they found they found the button, but <laughs> they did find the button. They did find the rape door button, but that could have anyway. been used for anything. That's a good. Um, that's a good that's segue, a good segue to the the final thing we have to talk about, and that's Ahsoka, uh, which only Sire after the, watched the movie. The movie. I, I don't know. This is the movie podcast. I don't know why this is on the list. We, you know, all media. It was a two hour. It was, it was two episode premiere, which is roughly the length of the movie, I guess. Yeah. What did you think about it? Um, 
Okay, hold on. I, I'm, I'm going to pause Hollow here so I can get into this. Thank you. Uh, so all of the bad live action Star Wars shows up to this point, for the most part, have been written by John Favreau. So the Mandalorian and, and Book of Boba Fett mostly. So he sucks. Ahsoka is written by and, and Andor is written by Tony Gilroy, and that that's a good show. Uh, Obi Wan kind of sucks, but I don't think he's written. I don't know who the hell wrote that. Anyway, Dave Filoni, who was the showrunner of the Clone Wars, which uh, is a cartoon and, for children. The cartoon for children, Rebels, a cartoon for children, uh, the Bad Batch, a cartoon for children. Uh, wrote this and also directed it. He's maybe not a great director. He's directed a few episodes of uh, the other live action shows. Um, I think I think uh, the Mandalorian and Book of Boba Fett very stupid directionless shows even the you're, early scenes of the mandalorian i didn't think were you're that. talking about like season one season uh, of what mandalorian the mandalorian yeah really i think I mandalorian season, season one, one i thought they were good i think season one was accidentally decent <laughs> let's say uh i mean it's directionless the, sure but it's episodic i don't know right so the thing i liked about ahsoka was in the first episodes, they're immediately pretty much telling you exactly where the show is going to go. They have like a, a clear goal in mind. I'm not saying they, they're telling you how the rest of the show is going to unfold, but like there is a there is a clear through line of this show. Mm -hmm. The huge problem with the Soka, as and th this is this is mistakes that Disney is constantly making. I feel is. It it is for all intents and purposes a direct follow on to the Rebels cartoon. It takes place like fifteen years later, but it is directly following up on events that happened at the end of Rebels. Is this after she was in Mandalorian timeline wise? Yes. Okay. And the episode of Mandalorian she was in the like weird villain in that, like the the I forget what they call her. The woman she fights, who's got like the fucking fortress or whatever, right, uh, is like the main antagonist of this. So they, I, I didn't know what her deal was. They get into what her de her deal was now. Did they not like clear that whole situation up on the Mandalorian? I don't remember that episode that much. Like, did Mandalorian not like well, unseat she... that evil queen <laughs> or whatever? Yeah, yeah. I think they they defeated her. She's not dead. She's still around. Okay. Turns out she's a witch. Oh, like the which Sith I don't witch. know. Uh, the well, no, no, like a, a different sister? type of witch. witch? Yes, night sister. Oh, oh right, the night the night sisters aren't Sith. Yes, yeah, right. Although there's two possible Sith in this with orange <laughs> lightsabers. Which, what? so, okay, if you've never watched the cartoons or yeah. played Kotor. Or fall or Kotor, Kotor, with or Fallen okay. Order. Like, would you have any idea what a Night Sister is? Is that only in those? Like, has that ever been in anything? Uh, that... They're not even canon. They're not in the movies. Well, they're canon now. They're in this. I mean, they were. A this thing isn't in the, a movie. They were. They existed in the old EU. I, I think. Like, I think. And I think the Masasi were different. The, the Masasi temple was the Yavin base. Right. But that was all that was all extra uh, f filmic shit. Yeah. Um I think like the witches of Dathomir had been mentioned in the old EU. Uh that's not I don't that's not really important. I, the, okay. You don't really need to know that. It it, it gives you a little bit of context, but I, where I thought you were going to ask was if you haven't seen Rebels could you jump into this show? And I think like, I, I don't think you would know at all what's going on. Why should we care Probably. about Ahsoka? She has a white I, lightsaber. She, Ahsoka is like the best character in star Wars. <laughs> Honestly, she has the but why? best character arc of any character in all of star Wars. As far as I'm concerned, why you'd have to watch. That's the thing you'd, you'd have to watch all of the clone Wars and all of rebels to like, really fully get 
why Ahsoka is an important character. And I think the most important thing to know about Ahsoka is uh, at the end, in like season five of the Clone Wars, so not at the end, not quite the end, uh, it went seven seasons. Um, but in season five, she is framed uh, for a murder. And the entire Jedi Order basically turns on her, even though they have no evidence that she actually did it. So when that all gets cleared up, rather than, and Anakin is like her only cheerleader, really. Um, and when, when that whole mistaken thing gets cleared up and she, she's cleared of, of her alleged crimes, they tri- they're like, we're so sorry. We made a huge mistake. We'd love to have you back in the order. Cause she, I think she got like excommunicated or something as, as a result of that. And she's like, fuck no, you guys didn't have my back. And she fucking leaves. And I thought that was like the ballsiest fucking thing to do in a, like a children's show with with such a like status quo as star wars so so the rest of her uh storyline in, in the clone wars the last two seasons or i guess just the last season because i think she wasn't even in season six is just her trying to make her way now like because she now she has no one uh and there's a there's a little bit of she gets involved in the siege of mandalore which is like going on at the same time as revenge of the sith which is the last arc of of the clone war season seven and that's cool uh and then during the rebel times and rebels she's like she becomes uh like an information broker and she still has lightsabers and shit she still has all her skills but she's not she doesn't consider herself a jedi anymore so if i can interject yeah yes please god she, <laughs> she no one's saying anything like you just keep talking uh I, she in, sounds awful. I don't know her from Adam, but ahead, in please. in Mandalorian, she you know she like seems to be sort of with Luke, like she's like down with well, that Luke was, rebuilding that was the. the Jesus, right? She, <laughs> it's, it's, I know, right? It's yeah. Stupid. That's um, why the God was it? Um, yep. Yeah, you're right. Was she in Mandal- She was only in the one episode of Mandalorian episode, and the yes. rest was Book of Boba Fett? Right. She's, I think, in two of those. Okay, okay. Oh, okay. No, I think she's only in one of those. Um, I don't know. I think she's in at least two. But, so, like, she seems to be, like, down with Luke, like, restarting the Jedi, right? Like, do you, do you think that's yeah. earned or, like, weird or, like, is there anything about I mean, that just- in this show or, you know, do they still have the fake Luke? These are three There's different no, questions. There's no these. Luke to be seen. This is like the main three characters of the Ahsoka show are Ahsoka and she's not even really the main character yet. Like the Sabine Wren, who is one of the major characters from Rebels, one of the main characters who is a Mandalorian of the, the like traditional sense, the Bo-Katan like type Mandalorian, born, not not the Mandalorian right. type Mandalorian. The, the she's cult. not like the weird Right. She's not the she's weird not culty the cult type. Cult. She's ethnically Mandalorian. Uh, I don't think there's an ethnic Mandalorian oh, anymore. Born Man- oh, right. I think she. I blew it up for whatever. She is, I don't like know. the Mando is fucking like a foundling, right? There's the Mandalorians yes. who are the white people from the planet, and one of them looks like D Light and is the queen of those, and <laughs> they have politics and stuff. But then there's also Mandalorians who are basically. Just Klingons who have a cult about being really cool fighters, and they're they're totally different things, but they're called the same thing. Yeah, Star Wars it, is fucking stupid. I think it's the, the result of them trying to mash like it was seventeen consist- different canons together yeah, into one I mean, canon. It, yeah, there's it was different in the old canon. Is Bo Katan in this? Not yet. I I kind of don't think she will be. I think she's kind of just become the second Mandalorian and the Mandalorian. I think they should change the name of the Mandalorian to the Mandalorians. And then the, they, the they radio heads. I, I think they should have, this is my idea. In, instead of doing the book of Boba Fett, they should have changed the name of the show to the Mandalorians. And then you, you can just say it's still the same show that that way you don't have like this weird 
thing right. where you have to watch these two episodes of but, Book of Boba Fett. But then they couldn't go the Boba Fett. <laughs> oh, Boba Fett. Yeah, that was it. Was all worth it for that? Yeah, I popped. Um, Is Chun Li in this? What are you doing? <laughs> Come on. I don't remember the actress's name or the character's name, but she played Chun Li in the original Street Fighter movie. Her name's Fennec. Yeah, Fennec. Oh, Shan. no, she's not in this yet, and probably okay. won't be. I like Fennec Shan. Anyway, the main three characters are Ahsoka and I Sabine. know Kristen Crook isn't fucking in this. She's Who? not in anything. Who's that? Chun Li in Legend of Chun Li. She's from Smallville. She's in Smallville. Who gives a fuck about Smallville? A lot of people I know. Anyway, continue. Do you st- how do you? What do you think? Of, like, are are you confident about this show? Or are you gonna? Yeah, Star Wars saved. I I am I am I I think this is a promising start. I like I, what for if, me yeah, four times like, as a Star Wars fan. Well, for you there, as a Star Wars fan who watched all of the cartoons, right? That's what I mean. I I would. What about like, if recommend you didn't too. watch all the cartoons? It's it's. Good, I just don't know if you would understand. Because not only are they referring to things that happened in Rebels without like fully explaining like exposition wise what's what they're talking about. There's also this implied shit that went on between Ahsoka and Sabine, who I I guess took on Sabine as like an apprentice, even though she's not a she doesn't have like force powers. She had the dark saber. Sabine had the dark saber at one point. To further complicate the, <laughs> the ownership of the dark saber, when she get it? When did anyone I else think, get it? Okay, so to trace the like entire before, lineage of before the what's dark his saber, face got it, I believe Giancarlo uh, Esposito. Shut up! <laughs> I'm trying to think. I mean, you don't have to the trace first, the whole thing. I'm just the first person we see with the dark saber in Star Wars canon, to my knowledge, is. Um, Oh, what's his fucking name? Pre Vizsla <laughs> on, the, on the Clone Wars show, who is the leader of Death Watch, who are a Mandalorian terrorist organization that Bo Katan is also in initially, who are basically Mandalore has become a pacifist state in the present day of uh, the Clone Wars, and uh, Death Watch is trying to bring them back to like the, the Klingon warrior type roots or whatever. And they're doing terrorist things. So okay. Darth Maul eventually takes over Death Watch and ends up and kills Pre Vizsla and gets the Darth Maul died. Saber. No, I he thought became he was, a spider. He came back. I thought he was the Crimson Sun or whatever. It's he, that his thing becomes Crimson Dawn later. Yeah. The, the, okay. His his whole criminal empire like has three different names over the the course of the series. But uh so then in Rebels, Darth Maul leaves the the dark saber on Dathomir, and that's when Sabine gets it. Oh, but she didn't earn it. No, I I, I don't think that was a the thing they made up for the Mandalorian, like most of the things in the Mandalorian. I, I think the whole owner. I, I don't really remember. I like she's in a, she's in like a, a a clan, like one of that. So what, the, what's the Ahsoka about houses. so far? Uh, okay, so <laughs> at the end of Rebels, Ezra Bridger, who is the main character of Rebels, and Grand Admiral Thrawn are sent to their... I, I, uh, Ezra basically sacrifices himself and by summoning Pergils, which are the flying space whales that I guess show up in an episode of The Mandalorian. I think it's... You're right. No, it is Mandalore. Sorry. I, you confused and, uh, me with the Boba Fett thing. I, I yeah. second guessed. So the, those, the space whales are established in like an earlier episode. They're able to travel through hyperspace, these whales. And he has some sort of connection with these whales because he's a force user. I think that his, his special thing is communicating with animals or some shit like that. So he summons the force whales and the force whales take him and Thrawn and like they're in Thrawn's uh, Star Destroyer, the Chimera. And sends them away. They they hyperspace away somewhere, just to get Thrawn out of the fucking picture. And that is never that is how Rebels ends. 
where there's this little hook of like oh look you just started again um <laughs> like so now i get now i get distracted um there's this little sequel hook of sabine and ahsoka are like we're gonna we're gonna go find ezra now we have to go find our friend and that's what this is picking up on and the act the end of the second episode of ahsoka is actually like a recreation of the the epilogue of rebels which is kind of cool and in, in live action it was kind of neat to see it um so it's just so you do get some a, thrawn in live action thrawn will be in post this, I, you're saying Thrawn like is not in they, Thrawn, Thrawn they is not away. Thrawn was not in the 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 flashback thing. Yeah, the, the flash forward, I guess. Um. So at the beginning, Ahsoka finds a map. It's it's just like uh, the beginning of Force Awakens. She finds a map in like a Jedi temple or some kind of Force temple thing, and she has to go to Sabine to decode it or help decode it or something. And meanwhile, the villains are building this huge. You remember the hyperspace rings from like episode two? The Jedi Starfighter had to use the hyperspace ring to go into hyperspace. Yes. Yeah, yeah. They're building a gigantic one of those using like they're stealing hyperdrives from decommissioned star destroyers and making a huge hyperspace ring called the Eye of Scion to because the map they. Who has the map? I think they get the map back. The, the good, bad guys steal the map from the good guys at some point. And the map is leading to another galaxy. So there's, we're going to another galaxy in Star Wars. This has never been done. That's where, like, it's, it's a big, important lore thing that's kind of exciting for Star Wars. That's why I'm excited for the show. It could get dumb. I trust Dave Filoni. I think he's done. I think he's a great custodian of Star Wars. I think he's like the closest to the next George Lucas, for better or worse, I guess. <laughs> I haven't liked everything he's done. I didn't like the Mortis arc. I didn't like his fucking dimension hopping world between worlds the thing. Wha- and, what? I'm just kidding. Yeah. Sorry. I know what you're talking about. Oh, I think because it's my name. Yes. I think we were talking about the other thing, which is way more egregious to me. But sorry. Um, <laughs> Can I ask you a question? Sam? Yeah. Um, <laughs> what is the the chance? What are the chances of them going through this hyperspace ring to the other galaxy? And it's like this season, the extended universe, the the old. What? Extended universe. What? It's not another. Galaxy. It's not another universe. It's another the galaxy. Are. So I don't think right, that's going to happen. I, if it did, how would you feel? If it's well, like the, the MCU. They're, they're already pulling in a bunch of EU stuff into this. Like, first of all, Thrawn at all is, you know, totally nothing fucking matters EU. unless Kyle Katarn shows up. I, I think it's very likely Kyle Katarn could show up. Well, they're, since they're, Night Dive's remastering <laughs> Dark Forces, I think pulling, it is likely. They, they've been pulling in tons and tons of elements of the old EU into the new canon. I can definitely see it happening. There is there is a weird through line going like this. Who's that other guy? Dash Rendar? Fuck no, Dash Rendar. Fuck about no, Dash yeah, Rendar. Dash Rendar's not going to come back. He sucks. I care ass. about him. The he, only reason he died, Dash Rendar, in, uh, a, he died he, in an asteroid hit him. He, he's got yeah. a cool name. He died in a sentence. Um, you remember when Star Killer pulled a moon <laughs> down on top in of sentence. in on top of yeah Chewie and Han? That was funny. Wait, Stark? What? That was that was the Yuuzhan Vong? You're getting, yeah, you're getting you're getting two different things conflated. That's not canon anymore. Um, but between the Bad Batch latest season, the Mandalorian latest season, and there's another season uh, of some they of made this, more than one of Bad Batch. Yeah, there's two seasons of Bad Batch. Wow. They're they're sort of adapting a lot of the Heir to the Empire plot elements into the canon now, and supposedly they're working weird. on a on a movie that's supposed to be like the culmination of the Mandalorian and Ahsoka and like all the other live action stuff. They're doing kind of, I, I guess, I guess Marvel was Isn't always like movies. Most of the Heir to the Empire stuff, not really doable now. Is everyone fucking dead? 
you can't have the main characters like of the original trilogy, but like a lot of the plot elements, like the clone, the Sparty cylinder cloning shit, mm. um, Thrawn's plan. Um, Ahsoka now is pulling elements. It seems like from uh, the new Jedi order, the Yuzhan Vong thing. Cause that the whole deal with the Yuzhan Vong was that they were an extra galactic threat. Like they were from another galaxy or outside the star Wars galaxy, at least. Mm-hmm. Um, and it seems like maybe they're going in sort of that direction. I hope not fully. Cause I always thought that they were fucking dumb. Cause they had like, they just look like zombie mm-hmm. skeletons and they had like living ships that were just giant flying crabs or whatever. Like the force doesn't work on them. Right. Y- yeah. What's that? Um, uh... Outbound flight is another one. Where, that was an old story where they flew outside the galaxy, which is kind of similar to the, the hyperspace ring thing. I have, I have two other questions. Sure. Have, I, is Salamari shown up yet? A living Isalamiri has not appeared, but uh, Thrawn did but have ta- like talked de- about it. Or? Decorative Isalamiri on his throne or something, or on okay. his desk in the in Rebels. I would yeah, not be surprised like if it a, happens. Like I said, they're pulling a lot of elements from right. Heir to the Empire. Have there been any what huge ships? The- also, there was an E-wing. There was an E-wing in the first episode from Dark Empire. They're old ass. EU ship. Now, I haven't read any Dark Empire yet, but that's me neither. Cool. What's the Hujib? A little the mouse Hujib, guy. The Hujibs are in, dude. Are, are those? Conf- you're talking about what the Jabba's were eating? Yeah. Do we no, have confirmation those were Hujibs, or did think... they just happen to look like Hujibs? Let me let me check. Like in episode six. No, Actually, in since. in Book of Boba Fett, the the hut twins oh, were, were eating were creatures eating that looked they like were... hujibs. I don't remember. Oh, Wikipedia looks weird. They are confirmed to be hujibs now. We have confirmed hujibs in the Book of Boba Fett. Wow. The only thing I really remember there from Book go. of but Boba they don't Fett speak. is Fennec Shan being cool and the Scorponok droid, which was stupid but cool. <laughs> oh, there's the Ewing. I put, I put the they look a little screen. bit different. That looks neat. Like, just looks like an yeah, X wing with two less wings. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it's like a bit stubbier now. Like the nose isn't quite as long, and they got rid of that stupid cannon on top of the canopy, which I you I need that know, for the I, E. I, I never knew how you you were supposed to get in. How do you like? How does the cockpit open? <laughs> does it swing Maybe out it of slides the way? forward? Swivels. Maybe just slides down along the nose. Maybe. Um, my other question was, it's a two-parter. Oh, I What's thought the other question was what a hujib is. No, that was, well, more just asked about hujibs after I asked for about two questions. Um, what is the name of that, that hermit type Jedi Obi-Wan. knight, Jedi master that in, uh, Heir to the Empire that like wanted Luke. Oh, Joris Kabeoth. Joris Sabioth. Joris is- is Isn't he it gonna C show apostrophe up? Bayoff? It's pronounced Sabayoff? I don't know. Oh. I've never known how to pronounce the actual name Sabayoff. I, I, I think it's Sabayoff. I assumed but... it was like Kaboth. All right. I don't know. What about him? Will he show Is up? He I... show... Has he been hinted at at all? He might be one of the, the Sith guys. He might be using an alias. I don't, like, I don't know. Like I don't know who these two Sith dudes are who are working for the witch lady. There's a girl and well, a, like, there's a blonde girl and an old dude, Ray Stevenson, who died. By the way, so if they want to do, two. if they want to do like that aspect of the Air of the Empire, is he just going to be going after Ahsoka, or is, is there another Jedi I, that's I mean, around right now? Well, it turns out thousands of Jedi survived Order sixty six. Apparently, <laughs> the way. I mean, at this point, there's more named Jedi that have fucking survived than or killed. Than have, have we reached episode seven yet in the t- in like this show's timeline? No, I think they're. I think the shows are about nine ABY, which is five years after Return of the Jedi, and uh, okay. Force Awakens is thirty four ABY. So we got. Yeah, I feel like they're going to go. try as long as possible not to hit that. Oh I God. don't see Seven why years. they wouldn't just go straight fucking past it and do new <laughs> shit. Like, I know why. Because 
well, they, the entire they, reason episode seven is the way that it is is why, but they killed, they killed I mean, Palpatine. There's no more evil in the world. Yeah. <laughs> in the I still think they should do crazy. Yeah, they could do, they could do like a Star lines. Trek it, type thing, it, like a post scarcity take, Star Wars. Yank some shit from another galaxy. <laughs> I feel like young you Luke know, should like, have died in Obi-Wan. It would have been amazing and like continue from there. They didn't, you know, the killing Palpatine didn't take the first time, but this time it's for real. Yeah, because he, he was like look, a, yeah, I don't all of the Jedi, all of the Jedi destroyed all of the Sith. So now there's right. only right. there's only Rey, and she doesn't even have a lightsaber. Yeah, she does. Did she yellow. bury? She's right, a yellow sorry, she, now, she is, buried Luke's. And what Kylo's. does the yellow lightsaber mean? On Tatooine for no reason. Well, that's the the, the reason she has a yellow lightsaber is obvious. It's just that it's not blue or red, right? Because she's neither Jedi nor Sith. She's a, she's a gray. It's a gray Jedi. It's I mean, red and green together makes yellow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That that's, some, that's some George Lucas shit. So she's all the Jedi and all the Sith. She's either none or all. Yeah. Uh, no, I mean, that's why they That's why they did the new Jedi Order and the new the Yuzhan Vong was because there's nothing left to do. We have to keep cranking out books. Let's do a whole initiative. We're going to make a 20 book series about invaders from another galaxy. I mean, why not? Like the premise of star Wars and the, and the, and the, the universe it exists in is interesting. Yeah, there are can, interesting yes, things you can just, there. Yes. You could just keep doing right. If you want, just, you like you, from anything. you could do literally anything you wanted with star Wars, as long as you don't have to have it be, a threat to the entire galaxy, <laughs> you know, right, like you could right. tell any story you wanted. So that was way more than I wanted or expected to talk about Ahsoka. But I mean, that's you even there, talking about the any... tackle box. No, it's too late. <laughs> so what if there was an Ahsoka tackle box? That'd be funny. There probably is. <laughs> I think they made a clone war. They didn't line. have any Baby Yoda Something merch going. for a whole year. How are they going to have an Ahsoka here's, here's tackle box? Here's a BB-8. Ahsoka's in Fortnite now. Oh, I found a Clone Wars tackle box, but Ahsoka's not on it. What the fuck? Well. There's a BB-8 tackle box. So I can't recommend Ahsoka if you haven't seen Rebels, but if you haven't seen Rebels, I recommend that. But you have to watch all of the Clone Wars to... I'm not gonna you do could that. you could jump into Rebels without the context of the Clone Wars, but it would help. No, but it's definitely standalone. Is enough. is Rebels across. the one that is 2D, or is Rebels the one that is 3D? There's no 2D. They're all 3D except for the old Clone Wars. So there's a Clone Wars that was 2D. Yes, but then they did another Clone Just Wars that no was longer 3D, canon. Which yes, is no longer canon. <laughs> they were Saj like, Ventress like showed up in the. 3D Clone Wars, right? Yes. Uh, okay. Major the 2D character. ones were like five minutes long, Mortis. Like yeah. they were very short little micro episodes. You would you would love the original one. You it's great. It. It's like an it's hour fucking long. Fucking Skinny Tartakovsky. I streamed them recently. It's probably two hours altogether. They're on the Internet Archive. Hmm. Well. Maybe check it out. So Um what before you end it i yeah. i do want to pick sire after brain about star wars a little bit more um please by any all means. chance i get it's great to do it uh we mortis mentioned earlier that we are an all media podcast uh that includes video games have okay. you been paying attention at all to that that new video game whatever it's called the, the soft one out out Cass, was it called Outlaw? I think it is that what you're talking. It yeah, I think. Are you talking about the the David Cage one? Uh, I don't think anything's mm. out there yet. About That's that, not. Right? It's not going to happen. They were insane to announce that when they did. Nothing had been done on it yet. Like they just made a trailer. They didn't pull the, the shit in the trailer from anything. They just made a trailer. Now they have to make a game. Based it's on, got a, they're, not, uh, they're not going to. It's not, that's never going to come out. Mark my words. I haven't been, but anyway, to answer your question, 
Yeah. I I haven't. No, I saw the like five minute clip. We just watched that the other night. <laughs> yeah. I, I think, is there anything else? Not, like, I don't think, there? well, there's like a 10 minute gameplay video that right. we were watching, but yeah, I don't know. I don't know that there's anything. I'll probably play it. I don't know. I still haven't I played hope it's, the, uh, I hope it doesn't include any character that we know about. That's all I'm. All I'm hoping for at this point. I don't think they will probably have Dash Rendar showed anything yet. Now, if they did bring Dash Rendar into that, it might be okay. I mean, yeah, that wouldn't be a huge issue. I just mean like I don't want it as long as I don't want it to touch any of the movies. Yeah, I know. I know what you mean. I, I I don't think it has to. It doesn't. You're right. I I feel like they'll they won't be able to help putting in a couple characters or something, but I don't think it's gonna tie into any of the event the events but i don't know okay okay thank you <laughs> <laughs> so i don't know don't watch ahsoka oh also also the the uh the first episode what uh, the, there was a lot of ahsoka uh, there was too much dead air the shots Wait. were too long. <laughs> it was weird. Huh. It was very drawn out. That's I don't know if that's a direction issue or if they were just trying to balloon the run time of the first episode over an hour. The direction could use some work. The writing seems okay so far. I'm excited for more. Thank you. But don't watch it unless you've... <laughs> Don't, probably don't watch don't it. go out of your Steve way Rebels. to watch it but if you want to watch it if, you know what I you're did? probably already watching it well, go watch a like youtube video of recap of all of rebels you, that'll probably be enough if you really want to see it but i can't imagine. yeah i'm sure i'm sure you could find videos of that anywhere from five minutes to three hours in length depending <laughs> on your particular right. i think when i watch is like five minutes but the, the question is, will you be invested enough in the characters to want to watch Ahsoka if you, if you haven't seen that? Show? I don't know. I don't know. I don't get what they're doing. I, I, I feel like Disney's fucking strategy is real weird and bad. Yeah. Generally well, speaking. <laughs> that's, yeah. <laughs> that's sort of across the board. All right. Well, <laughs> let's wrap it up. Uh, we got some we got some various thematic pairings of films, you know, we'll, we'll be back. We'll see you next week. We'll have some structure. Uh, until then, if you put in the comments, if you want to see a fighting game movie episode. <laughs> yeah. If you're not on the podcast, put in the comments. If you want to see a fighting game Mortis. movie episode. <laughs> he knew what I was going to do. <laughs> it doesn't have to be he knows what Legend of Chun Li. It doesn't have to be Legend of Chun Li. There you are other fighting. You games. can't put a comment in yet, Sire Raptor. The video's not up. Huh? I heard you type what? it. I, I'm, I'm saying you're going to put the comment in anyway. See you next week. What? Co- what? I heard you Bye. typing. What comment? That you wanted to. S- Ah, you, never mind. You should have faded out in the middle of my fucking Ahsoka ramble. <laughs> Goodbye, folks. That was. <laughs>